I'd like to call the January 7th meeting of the Concord Planning Board to order. Uh, this meeting is being uh, videotaped and also recorded, but if you want to make your own recording, feel free to do so, but let us know so we can make arrangements not to disrupt the meeting. I'll start with, uh, before our first item on the agenda, I'll start with uh, an announcement. Um, the town, as you may have heard, is working with the Metropolitan Area Planning Council uh, on a long-term vision and plan for the Thoreau Depot uh, business district right around the, the depot station. And uh, that project has already gotten underway. Um, and at our next meeting on January 21st, the MAPC will be presenting their um, results. For oh, sorry. Walden Street. Oh, on the Walden Street Visualization Study. 59 Walden. Oh, 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 that's right. Okay, sorry. Fall back. All right. So there are two different things that there the MAPC has been things. doing with us. So one, if you recall, uh, what in the last year, uh, there was extensive discussion, and even I think even the previous year, yeah. discussion about uh, 59 Walden Street. So it's the former TD Bank building and what to do with that building and what streetscape changes might occur, you know, if it was redeveloped. And so the MAPC uh, actually did a visualization study of that site and will present their results. So anyone that's uh, interested in that Walden Street area would like to attend that. Then on our following meeting on February 11th, another team from MAPC will be uh, working with our planning staff on a public workshop. So instead of having our normal meeting, we're gonna have this public workshop on the Thoreau Depot project. And uh, it will have um, a, you know, a presentation of why we think it's important to you know, do development in that area and the timeline and process for the, the project. And then um, there will be uh, opportunity for the public to provide input on the vision and the types of restaurants and stores and, and other things in the area that could benefit the area uh, and the kinds of mixed use that could be developed, transportation needs and any other changes to make a vibrant neighborhood. So. I really hope that folks will come out for that. I think it's a very important initiative for the town over the next uh, couple of years. Okay, so with those announcements out of the way, um, let's move to our 7, a, uh, 7, 8, 7 p.m. Uh, agenda item, which is the recommendation to the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, for application of Charles Audi uh, to amend a special permit that uh, was received if, a little while ago on section 7734, 77313, 116, and 118 of the zoning bylaw for relief from parking design standards at 143 Sudbury Road. So, do we have someone representing the applicant? So, would you please identify yourself? And Good evening. I'm Paul Mahoney from Mahoney Architects in Concord. I'm here with Charlie Audi, the applicants okay. as well. Um, so I worked with Charlie back on the previous special permit, so he asked me to help him with this one as well. And um, uh, I think uh, the planning report gave a good summary of this, so I'll just briefly describe what is happening here. The first thing is I try to work this pen. It's a little button. There we go. Thank you. Um, so up on this little area, the top right of the plan, got Thoreau Street, Sudbury Road here. There's um, existing stacked parking, and originally uh, the layout for this was um, uh, for eight spaces, four feet, uh, four spaces wide by two feet. And the reality is that um, Charlie can fit 15 cars in this area, so the application is requesting to modify this to now be five wide by three deep. And um, that would be managed through attendant parking, um, so Charlie would have one of his employees uh, parking the cars there and moving the cars. Uh, customers wouldn't be using that area themselves. So it'd be used for people who are dropping the cars off to have them service during the day or employees uh, to park there. And the, the reason why this is kind of necessary is that uh, the way a lot of people use um, Charlie's uh, service station is to drop the car off, take the train, go into work, come back you know, at 5 or 6 p.m., pick up the car and go home. So in other places, you might leave your car for an hour or two and pick it up when it's done. 
but because of the convenience to the commuter rail, a lot of people leave it, come back much later. So there's kind of a need for this additional storage there. Um, so uh, that's really the brief summary of this. Um, I noticed two uh, typos in the application. Oh, yeah, one was there's pretty a, significant. There's, there's um, one, two, three, four. Consistent. Typos. Consistent typos. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, that's what I get for um, doing things late at night, not wearing my glasses. No, it wasn't. It wasn't because I just read my memo and oh. I described them as eight by twelve. Oh, okay. okay. So you're off yes. The hook. Yeah, because I thought that Charlie was starting to repair smart cars when I read this. Um, no, I had mistakenly written okay. 12 feet but right. on the Yay. site plan from Stanisky and McNary. They're 15 feet deep. Uh, and I just double checked again. The average size depth of a car is 14 feet, 14.7 feet. Um, uh, I thought it was 15.7. I used to think it was longer myself. I just Googled it. And okay. you can't, you know, fault Google. So <laughs> That's what I thought I Googled last night. So. <laughs> we okay. Yeah. Anyways, the, the practical reality is that he's often been able to fit three deep there. So um, that, that's kind of, kind of how they fit in. And then the other um, typo I just noticed, I think we have a count incorrectly noted on here. Okay. That, um, uh, previously, we were showing 16 spaces and we're adding seven spaces to get to 23. And you were okay. referencing 21 in yours. I'm not sure where that came from. Uh, so, once again, it was late. Yep, yeah, no worries. Um, all the other spaces that we showed last time are not changing. So there are, uh, there's a handicap space here, there are spaces here, and there is a space here next to the building. So when you add all of those up with the additional spaces that are proposed, it comes to 23. Okay, um, questions from the board? Oh, I have a question. I mean, what if you have I mean, I doubt if you'd have three stacked Suburbans in this thing, you know, they're 18 point something feet long. Mm -hmm. But regardless, you know, different cars are different lengths. And what happens if, I mean, is there a restriction that the cars may not extend beyond the end of the lined area? Currently in the staff report, there's no um, restriction. I think that that's a, a valid argument that um, it, it should definitely not extend um, because if they did they would impede the driveway, the driveway right mm -hmm. so even, even if it extends it will affect my customer gets a room right okay. so that's so just so why we would not do that yeah i just didn't know if so I, I don't, it, it may be a simple um solution to say you know cars shall not extend past the um, the lined the, the well the edge of the the edge of the building immediately so with the yeah the that, that right. seems it's a reference point at least yeah I mean I just thought the lines themselves provided something those are the that was the main thing that occurred to me I think didn't we receive a public comment about the we received a letter yeah the handicap uh, accessible parking space. That, that the handicap space location made it difficult or dangerous to, um, that was what the, the letter was alleging, to get to the building. That it's, it's right near, you know, entry and exit right. to, to the space. And I was wondering, is it possible to, to move that space or swap spaces with the one that's closer to the garage on the right there? This one or this one? Yeah, that one. Yeah, would that, one. that um, be possible? Then be I don't. Close to the yeah, I think it would affect the ability to use this space. And the other thing is, it's kind of a question as to you know, we originally located here because the entrance is here to yep. where people come in, and this seemed to be the more direct path to that. Um, the reality is, there's lots of traffic here, right. no yeah. matter where you are. And there's a lot of backing out and forward from these garage bays all day long. So this might be technically look con more convenient, but I'm not sure it is necessarily safer. I think it would also affect the, the count on this side because right now, you know, you need this space next to the parking area. Yeah, but I mean, you are gaining a whole lot of spaces here. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe you, you could give one up if 
you know, and then leave a little bit of space more over there. Right. I do think that it is a lot less traffic on that end than over here, which is right next to the next entry to the and exit. And yeah. yeah. It's just something, you know, because you're gaining, what, seven spaces, right? I mean, do you need all seven or? Um, on that side, it's really dangerous because if a handicap is trying to get out from his car and go, there's the garage where we do inspection sticker. So every 10, 15 minutes, car coming in and out, and you get the air pump at the corner too, which people, they come to get their air. Yeah, I'm just trying to think if there's any other space. I mean, clearly it wouldn't work in this stacked parking back here. There's just no way to not make it get in the way of everything else. Well, two plus, it would prevent the, I mean, they said it attended only and, and out, yeah, right? it would so, just be yeah. a mess yeah. to try to do that. And then this in the back left corner, that's a space. Yes. Right, yes. But it's not wide enough to be a no, handicap so space. Uh, at, at there at all. Yeah. It does look quite narrow and getting back out must be interesting. Hard to think of. I don't know. I can't see anything right at, off the top of my head. For the that, handicap stuff? Yeah. No. I mean, I mean, you know, and the question is, <clears throat> how often is it used? And then the alternative is, would you have more usage if it was more accessible? I don't know. Because it's, it's probably not used a lot right now. Right. But then that just gets back to, I mean, the point of having right. one is so, <laughs> to be right. allow then, people then to, to use, use it. it. Yeah. So where is it right now? It's right down it's, in the bottom kind of right hatched. corner there. I mean, it does set off, you know, the right amount of space. And, and this is sidewalk around here. Mm -hmm. Can I ask the applicant, have you ever had a handicapped person complain to you about where, like, of a problem? I don't even have a handicapped person go on board there. So, so no, you have never had a complaint. Okay. Well, I don't know else how else to resolve that. So, I just um, if are there any other comments from the board. Okay, any uh, public comment on this special permit application? Um, okay. Oh, I just had one question for clarification. So, um, is is it because um, this type of use gets a certain number of parking uh, spaces and we're making a change to that. I just want to know kind of why they have to come in, in front of the board. Well, this reconfiguration of parking based upon the special permit that they previously got, you know, they need to get their okay. special permit. Changed. For the configuration of it. And yeah, the and configuration the doesn't meet the requirement. Right. right. Of, it's their original special permit. But also uh, it's having, stacked having compact stacked parking. parking. Right. It's a very unconventional approach, and they have to have attendant based parking in order to do that. So, and previously, they, they had to get a zone, zoning relief because they did not have enough parking spaces. This For the usage. The, right, but now they will have over the required amount, but they still have the, the, the parking layout, which is the stack layout, which needs to be approved. approved. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, ready for a motion? Yes. I make a motion that we, uh, let's see, this is, the, we recommend yep. to the Zoning Board of Appeals to support the application of Charles Audi to amend a special permit under section 7734, 773.13, 11.6, and 11.8 of the Zoning Bylaw for Relief from the Parking Design Standards at 143 Sudbury Road. Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? All right. Then all in favor? Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. And we are in time for our 7.15 p.m. item, which is a site plan review, the application of the Shoverbrook School under Section 
of the zoning bylaw to construct a new 5,900 square foot two story structure on an existing playing field connecting walkway and related site improvements to the parking lot and student drop off area at 200 Strawberry Hill Road. So, who's going to represent the applicant on this one? Uh, I will. I work for DSK Architects, we're the architects on the project, um, and we will also hear from the applicant, Daniel Hurd, who's the head of school, Okay. and brief comments from uh, Michelle Crowley, the landscape architect, and Sean Malone, the civil engineer. Okay. Um, so, let's see if we can just look at that. So I'll be brief. Um, I know that there's quite a bit of information in the report. Um, the building itself is about 5,900 square feet. Um, it is uh, intended to be, thank you, intended to be a two-story structure with fiber, fiber cement siding, um, a standing seam metal roof, and thank you. That's good. That's good. Um, and the goal is to achieve net zero energy, and that will be uh, achieved through uh, eventual solar PV panels on the, covering much of the roof, as well as what's currently designed through the mechanical and electrical systems as uh, a very high efficient uh, set of systems. Um, the barn will be primarily used for music and dance performances, as well as some uh, kind of overflow space, um, which Danielle can, can speak to a bit more. Um, there will be some flexible meeting spaces, staff offices, as well as a small staff kitchen. Um, there will be uh, no addition to the current enrollment numbers, and uh, just wanted to point out, we've met separately with uh, the fire department, the health inspector, uh, Elizabeth, and Concord Public Works just to kind of proactively capture any comments. So um, trying to make sure we're, we're working alongside uh, the town. And I'd like to say a couple words about the reason for the project. Sure, sure. Um, again, my name is Danielle Hurd, I'm the head of school at the Shore School, and um, we're particularly excited about this as a possibility because it allows us to continue to build on the programming that we have um, really had in place since the conception of the school. Um, the idea of having integrated curriculum where students are connecting across di different disciplines and have the flexibility to learn um, in different environments, academics, athletics, the arts, um, and also a real appreciation and celebration of the natural world, which has been part of our curriculum from the start. So um, this space with the flexible classroom, office space, small performance space will allow us to enhance the program possibly that we've had, but have just been squeezed in trying to do it um, in our existing facility. Um, but will also allow us to have great location and that connection with the natural environment um, on our campus, which our students really use as an extension of the classroom. Um, so when they're doing the field observations and studies, our hope is that our students are graduating from our school with an appreciation for the environment, but also knowledge and access to be real stewards of the natural environment as well. And this facility can help us build that Thank you. Do you want to talk at all about sure. the landscape? Do you want to go to the site plan? Yeah. Yeah. Would be included in these? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, they're actually set up right there. Oh, the, these are. They're, oh, okay. They're on here. 
No, she'll put the cover. You can put it right in front of the screen. If you put it, you put it right in front of the screen. If you slide the, slide the, mm -hmm. open the, no, on the top. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so this is a site plan pulled out to just show uh, the parking. Most of the parking isn't changing at all uh, for the barn. This is where the barn is going to be located. Um, there's quite a bit of uh, students crossing the the parking lot and so we've decided to take out a few parking spaces and create um, a raised island, a raised crosswalk in a landscape island to slow traffic down. Um, so that's the only work um, happening up in this area and as far as the site plan. Um, and then the, the landscape's quite simple. There's a rain garden that's capturing all the water uh, from the barn and just, um, just a landscaped area in between the wall and the barn that's going to have uh, you know some play logs on there for outdoor classroom or just some uh, play um, and so it's quite simple this is the connection from the school to the barn that um, Thea just described and uh, and we were thinking about uh, relocating parking for the the spaces that we were taking out um, of adding up here, we're going to talk about later tonight if we could, maybe if they're not, if we don't have to do that, we could maybe hold off on doing that for cost reasons. Um, but that's what this is showing in here. So that would be the only changes to this main parking lot. And otherwise, everything else is existing. Showing the board behind that is the civil uh, tracks. Okay, uh, for the record, I'm Sean Malone, OK, uh, OK Consulting Group, civil engineer for the project. Um, and just take a quick step back, um, just orient a little bit. I'm sure you're probably familiar, but uh, Strawberry Hill Road is out in the front here. Um, so this is the, the main school building. So the proposed discovery barn is uh, tucked in the back here. This is the parking area Mish was just talking about. Um, there's a rather large retaining wall uh, that goes around the parking area here. So the base of the discovery barn will probably be eight to 10 feet below the level of the, um, the parking here. Um, so all that will help to uh, mask and screen the, the project. Um, and, and the retaining wall is an existing condition. It's an existing condition that'll stay as is. We won't right. be touching that. We'll be, uh, the barn will be about 20 plus feet off of that. Um, the staircase is already there as well? The staircase is here as well, okay. yes, exactly. Um, so with respect to um, stormwater and utilities, um, as Mish mentioned, we'll be uh, constructing a new rain garden that'll take all the runoff from the new barn, all the impervious, the new impervious area, and we'll do that by using a, a stone drip strip on the uh, downhill uh, slope portions of the roof. Uh, this will capture the runoff and then bring it to the base and we'll, it will um, infiltrate back into the ground. In the parking lot, um, with these changes, we actually, including this parking, we have um, a net decrease in the pervious area. So this parking lot right now drains to a basin over here from uh, the previous uh, design and construction. So all this will essentially remain uh, existing. We will be having a couple more catch basins um, where we're adding this this um, speed hump, if you would, the crossing, uh, so that this is a level ground. So we'll have a couple catch basins where the, uh, the water will be cut off from where it sheds now. Uh, so the net effect is we'll be uh, no increase in the, uh, the runoff from the site, which goes down to Angier's Pond down here. Um, utilities to serve the barn will be through the um, connector to the barn. So we'll have uh, water and electric telecommunications within here. And then 
to get to the sewer, this is a septic system. So to get to the septic system, which is located in the parking lot here, we'll have a septic tank with an ejector pump to pump up into the existing sewer line uh, and connect into the existing system. Uh, as stated in our application, this project doesn't uh, represent any increase in the student enrollment or faculty, so there's no issues with the capacity of the existing system. We're proposing a, um, currently there's 156 parking spaces on site. Uh, the requirement under your zoning is 120 spaces. So we have a, a surplus currently of 36 spaces. With this project, including these five spaces, we would have 150 spaces. So we're still in excess uh, of 30 spaces on site. Um, in addition, the school also uh, on occasion uses the upper portion of the field over here for overflow parking. They can accommodate up to 40 additional spaces there for special events. Uh, water and sewer has identified um, the existing water services is something that may need some upgrades, so we're discussing that with them. Currently, the water is um, served by a eight inch main coming from Strawberry Hill Road that comes into the building here and then branches, or branches just outside of the building. Um, so we're talking about water and sewer, about what we can do to uh, make any changes there to, to meet their requirements. Um, I think as um, Nish mentioned in, in the report, we met with the fire department. Uh, their one concern or one of their concerns was access to the building from this upper portion. And currently there's three handicap spaces in this loop. As part of this project, we'll be eliminating those handicap spaces and making that a fire lane dedicated for the, the fire department access. Um, so I think that gives you a... Where will the handicap spaces be relocated? We're relocating them over right here. Right there. Yes. Okay. Yep. So we still meet all the uh, ADA requirements. Actually improve, it looks like an improvement in terms of access. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So, if there's no other questions. Um, I actually had a question for, based upon the planner report. Um, first of all, you had stated 120 spaces were required. The planner's report says 115, and then there's a statement about if there are non-school events, 38 spaces uh, would be required. And I assume that would be above and beyond if it's because it's segregated. Well, I know that there could be um, shared parking and overflow right. parking and reserve parking and but I mean they would need to apply for for relief no so the building commission for just the school including this um, uh, there's no required uh, requirement for additional parking because of this project for the school right the school is based on number of teachers and classrooms which is not changing because of this project um, and the building commissioners determined that the school requires 115 parking spaces. Right. Um, if the performance center was just to be, you know, rented for a non-school function. While school was in session. Well, just it, the well, it performance doesn't even center, yeah. it would be 38 spaces. So that's why the report says there needs to be additional information <clears throat> on whether it's going to be used for non-school events. Um, if if it's used during the same time that the school is going on for a non-school event, then then 115 and 138 they would not. You mean 115 plus 38 gets 38. us up to 153, which is just over, which and is, they would need uh, parking relief. Correct. I mean, it doesn't sound like it's a catastrophic well, situation, but but. But that previous, is the open question projects, that's in the planner report. I don't think report. they do need parking relief. They, they, right, it seems like they... They have, in the previous um, projects, they have over, approved overflow parking on the field for, what was it, 20, I think 40, 40, 40 spaces. Yeah. So then they're all set on that front. Okay. I just wanted to, because it did seem like there was almost a point of suspense in the, in the planner's <laughs> report about whether or not there were going to be, you know, events that were non-school events so um yeah um i just have a, a general comment about um 
this proposed new building um, that it's kind of sad to see taking up some of your undeveloped space with a new building. Um, and I'm just wondering, and especially like when you say, oh, it's gonna give you know, it's gonna give our kids access to the natural world, or it's like, it's by building an enclosed structure, you know, it's by, by taking, by um, eliminating some of that natural world with this enclosed structure. Um, it's just, it's sad. I'm, I'm just wondering, like, I'm wondering when you were thinking about fulfilling the needs that you have for the structure, did you go through a process of thinking about like, and I'm sure you have, I'm wishing you could <laughs> tell me about it. Um, like we've thought about our existing space. We've thought about how to meet these needs in every possible way with our existing space, knowing that this existing open space playing field, which is part of the natural environment of our campus is so valuable to us and to our, you know, the town and our future students and all this. Um, because in, in a way, like preserving that area and not building a structure would be communicating to your students if you could tell them that story. Like, like we, we actually were going to put a building here, but then we realized that it's more precious to preserve this as open space, and that's what we decided to do. So we came up with this other creative solution for how we're going to still do all these great things in our school. Um, I don't know, I wish we could all, that could be the story that we all tell. But what, do you have any reaction to that? or? Uh, I hear you, <laughs> um, and, um, and it actually is part of the story that we have been navigating. We've actually spent several years investigating all the possibilities and have delayed and delayed and delayed and tried to be as creative as we possibly can with our existing footprint. The story that I sometimes tell, which maybe I shouldn't tell in a public meeting, but is that we, we even repurpose our existing phone booths from the 1970s and 80s at the students are using the small you know, storage as well as, you know, spaces for small when they're recording that they move into those so that's great. So, so no, you should say that out loud with creative. Creative. <laughs> that's, Why not do that? We don't, have, we don't use phone booths anymore. Right. So that's great. We've tried to be as creative as we possibly can and yeah. we've just reached a point where it feels like creative is really, really putting a squeeze on the student experience yeah. program. And um, so we, we have, but yes, I completely agree with you um, uh, that it's, it is an important message that our students need to know that they should be as creative as possible with all of those uses. And one, one thing I didn't mention is that the fact that we've added a porch to the um, east side of the building that is open porch, the, co the covered walkway is also open air, but you know, no, not enclosed structure. And the porch, uh, programmatically is intended to be kind of an extension of a classroom and there will be you know some counter space and um, ability to kind of get the kids hands dirty it's right next to the garden that's that's there um, it's you know within very short walking distance to the wetlands and the you know surrounding trees the property is how many acres eight acres so it's like we're trying to Create a little moment that hopefully doesn't overpower the, the you know the natural environment around it, but instead creates a, a closer connection to that. But yes, and you know, alongside with that, I'll say we're, we're trying to use as many natural and kind of honest materials as we possibly can okay. with the architecture. So yeah, and the landscape as well, right? Even the spaces that Nish is highlighting, we really tried to think about it. The ways we can just take advantage of the natural berms within the landscape to create kind of amphitheater settings, or we can use natural logs instead of plastic and furniture. Mm -hmm. so how can we really celebrate? Is this going to be natural gas um, heating, or is it going to be electric? It's all electric. All electric. Okay. Other questions from the board before we move to public comment? Uh, just you, in the planner's report, it said we should um, come back, get, get information on the issues raised in the report. The only issue I saw was this potential question about daytime versus non-school hour issues. Were there any other issues or that I'm just missing? Um, no, as the applicant's been talking, I've been um, adding just a couple of notes to um, add as far as the um, incorporation of sustainability. Um, I don't think it was highlighted in the material that most of the roof um, was going to have solar panels. Um, that the use of the natural logs um, outdoors for seating and that um, it will be an all electric um, for heat. 
Yeah, I mean, I think like the more you can incorporate, like, and then, like, that's learning. Those are learning tools as well. Like, I think that's that's amazing. Um, um, but I think it should it should be noticed noted in the site plan whether um, you know, there will be outdoor, there will be non school um, Functions, performances yeah. or not. I mean, it's it's only 150 seats. You know, the building commissioner has determined that that only requires 38 spaces, so it's not a it's not a significant impact to the parking. You guys have many um, non-school functions. I, I know I've been to some non-school functions there, but do you have many? We don't have many, and certainly not during the school day. Okay. Right. And you don't anticipate you don't anticipate a change in that usage with with this new facility for non-school. Yeah. Yeah, can you hit something? Yeah, you mentioned that uh, the goal is for the, the uh, structure to be net zero, which I think is great. Um, but you said that's uh, uh, in, the, in the future once some solar panels are able to be installed. I just wondered if you had a time frame for that. Um, yeah, I'm sort of arguing. <laughs> yeah, we're, it's, it's partially um, depends on funding and uh, finding a great donor for that <laughs> to be honest but um, the goal is to have it it's it's going to be um, everything will be circuited and wired for those PV panels from day one okay. and so they'll be good you know they'll be ready to receive that as soon as possible and we, we believe we're on track for it now we are from both to exactly what that would be and I've worked with them before for the solar array that we have 800 kilowatt solar array on top of our gymnasium roof now and so we like work with the same company and they've given us the indication that we'd be ready to do it and we believe we're on track as long as we stay on budget to be able to do it with the Good, sounds great. Are there any trees coming down? Yes, Both seven. Seven, good. So one of the other things I should point out with what Mish was talking about with the parking spaces over there is that's where I think most of the trees are that are planning to be brought down. Yeah, that's, just, that's correct. Um, and so we're, we yeah. should talk about if we can eliminate those parking spaces. That is where the trees were coming down um, in order to mitigate some of the parking requirements. I guess not requirements, required. but <laughs> what we were taking parking spaces out, we were adding, that was a spot where we could add parking uh, near the project. So that's where, that's the only place where trees are coming out. I mean, it just seems given your plans and empirically that, you know, today you don't have a parking issue. And I don't understand why you would really need to construct those. How often do you find yourself not having enough parking spaces, like once a year at graduation? Graduation was more that I think was your events, maybe three or four times a year, but we just use the overflow parking on the mm -hmm. field. you guys thought about like composting toilets i just was reading this like consideration of like waste um on the for the permitted use of the site have you looked at that at all we looked at it um but we ended up going with a more traditional um just kind of low flow plumbing fixtures that kind of thing instead um just cost probably yeah. it's the big the biggest reason Um, I definitely would support <coughs> saving those seven trees. And then having the temporary parking on the field when they need it, that's just what we want to do. Yeah. No. Nobody, nobody is looking for nobody, the spaces. Nobody, nobody, I didn't know if there was like a four, like, <laughs> how would we them. do that? Okay, so <laughs> that sounds like we're deciding. Yeah. Okay. Um, everybody okay now with moving to public comment i know that we did receive one letter from the public from carlin reed of winston and Lort road um, expressing concerns about the potential uh, traffic impacts uh, of the project and uh, so i didn't know if there were any other uh, public comments yeah carlin reed 83 winston just let me say a little bit more about that um, there are some data in the application about the traffic flow 
but I didn't understand the context where that data came from. 170 cars on morning peak, 129 cars peak in the evening, 20 cars queued on Strawberry Hill Road in the morning, and 46 queued in the evening. I live in that area, so this is um, part of the way how, how we get to our house. Um, my concern is with the traffic impacts of, uh, of, of creating a performance facility um, and I don't think it's been addressed at all in this application. I don't know if that's something that the board is interested in looking at, but Strawberry Hill Road is kind of a busy route, and I have to believe that putting out an entertainment facility there is going to increase it. Uh, any other comments from the public? Yes. Um, Susan Bates, Convert Green. I just had a question about if you're putting the building on an existing athletic field, are you planning to create an athletic field somewhere else on the property? Okay, okay well, let's just catch all the public comment if there are any others, and yes. Janet Miller, 1647 Main Street. I just want to say as a member of the Comprehensive Sustainability and Energy Committee, it's great that you're doing a net zero building. I was just curious to know whether you're planning ground source or air source heat pumps. Okay, and then any other uh, comments or questions from the public? Okay, so then we have these three uh, questions and or concerns. One about the, the tra potential traffic impacts. Um, field. The, the playing field, whether there's a comp compensatory playing field planned, and then the ground source or heat, air source heat pumps. Any comments from the applicants? Well, I... If I may, just with respect to the traffic, um, there really would be no change over what's happening today. As they've stated, the, the performance area would be for school use. Um, if it were to be used for something other than school use, it would be off school hours when uh, the typical school traffic would not be um, part of it. So uh, there really would be no change in traffic. Okay, and then uh, about the playing field? Sure. Um, so the, the playing field is actually our, it's a part of our playground field. Um, so it, and it's not a regulation size soccer field or anything like that. We have two playing fields that we do utilize for athletic. Um, so this is, it's a small corner of just a play space, but not, not going to be replaced. So it's not something you're going to need to replace in your programming. No. Okay. And then about the uh, heating and cooling systems, HVAC. So we have a uh, uh, BBH uh, mechanical electrical plumbing engineers on the project, and I actually don't know if they looked into using ground source or air uh, heat pumps. Um, I think we may have looked at that as an option, but it, it was too expensive. Um, but I don't, I can't answer that specifically. I know that whatever we're doing is makes the most sense and is the most cost efficient um, mm -hmm. for, the, for the school. Um, and we try to, you know, they're pretty good at thinking outside the box and trying to come up with different ways to um, use alternative energy and, and things like that. But we ended up not going that route. I, I mean, I'm curious what, what the systems are then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what is, you know, electric. Be, because it's electric. Yeah. Gotta be one or the other. Sure. So um, I'm Brianna Pinero. I'm the owner's representative for the project. Um, so I'm not the mechanical engineer of record. So I'm saying this um, more off the cuff. But uh, what we're using in the in the barn is a mini VRF system. Um, some of them are split systems. Some of them are, um, you know, multiple indoor units connected to a single outdoor. Condensing so unit. So heat pumps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, I was like, I, I'm kind of separated from them, so I didn't yeah. know if I should interject, we'll, but we'll yeah. That's, okay. I'm sorry, Brianna, what you're with? Uh, CSL Consulting. We're the project, uh, the owner's representative for the project. And what is your last name? Panero. P A P I N H E I R O. P-I-N-H-E-I-R-O. Yes. With CSL consulting. Yes. Okay. So the barn will use air source heat pumps. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I guess we can now 
Uh, now, <coughs> you were suggesting that we really are not uh, completing our deliberations tonight because there's still additional information to be gathered. Um, no, at this point, I think you got we all got the what we needed answered. Yeah. So yeah. it would be just continuous to yeah. the next meeting for you to review your decision and conditions of approval. Okay. Because I don't know if we need any other guidance to you in establishing that. But it sounds like to me that everybody's in favor of granting the special the site plan. Um, so I'll draft a decision based on this report with the information that was gathered tonight to include in as your decision. Everybody on board with that? Without okay. the additional parking spots. Without well, the additional parking <laughs> spots. Without the additional parking spots. We'll submit a, a revised site plan eliminating those, those spaces. You don't have okay. to do that. Okay. I mean, you can if you want. <laughs> I think we can. Okay. okay. All right. Well, then that's good. Then. So we'll continue the hearing until our next meeting. And uh, so you actually need to move and second and continue. Okay. It's a public hearing. All right. So, uh, someone make I, a motion to continue the hearing? I move that we continue the public hearing until our next meeting, which I think is uh, January 21st. At 7 p.m.? At 7 p.m. Okay. Second on that? Second. Right. All in favor? Okay. All right. See you at the next meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we're ready for a 7.30 p.m. public hearing. So I can open the next public hearing. The application oh, <laughs> of Lemonade's Development Company under the sections 5.3.18 and 11.6 of the Zoning Bylaw for a special permit to allow the construction of a common driveway to serve two lots on land located at 2160 Main Street. So, who do we have representing the applicant here? Um, do you have a lady? Sorry. Yep, here you go. <clears throat> um, my name is Paul Kirshner. I'm from Sam's Game of We're the engineers on this project. Okay. Uh, so, I'm representing the applicant. So, I'm sure you're at least somewhat familiar with this application, but it's for a common driveway at 2160 Main Street. Uh, there is an existing house located on top of this hill. It's pretty much centered on the property. Um, so the Aspet River is located to the rear of the dwelling, uh, to the north. You have Main Street to the south. Uh, there's riverfront area associated with the Aspet River, as well as buffer zone associated with all the wetlands around here along the river, on this side, on the other side of Main Street. Um, of course, that's more of a natural resources issue, but it's relevant. It really constrains what we can do here. Um, so. What we want to do is utilize the majority of the existing driveway as a common driveway. Um, as you can see, it's it's extremely steep, as I touched on before. Uh, we did submit a proof plan that showed the driveway coming up along here, uh, but it w would require over 100 feet of retaining walls uh, on either side, you know, extensive earthwork um, right along Main Street to add another curb cut this, along the section of Main Street, which is already quite busy. Uh, so we want to use the existing curb cut. We're going to plan on modifying the driveway a bit uh, to reduce the amount of pavement here. Also make it more navigable for people who live here, but also emergency vehicles. Uh, we are providing a turnout area here for a fire truck. Um, so I had met with Walter uh, on a early in December to discuss the turnaround. Is it adequate in terms of where we're putting it? Uh, we want to use the grass pavers so that it just looks like lawn, but it has the strength to support the fire truck. Um, in the planner's report, I know that Elizabeth had identified his concern um, over the use of the type of grass pavers we had proposed. Um, I contacted Walter via email on Friday afternoon he replied late on Saturday, uh, okaying the use of these grass pavers. Um, I basically went over, you know, all we can, all we, all we really have to refer to is what these companies are providing us. This is how strong it is. So take it for what it's worth. But um, 
Grass Pave says it can support 15,000 PSI, which is well over what would actually be required for this. Um, it reports a 60-year design life, um, and it's plow safe. Now, obviously, if your plow guy is being a little bit reckless, they're going to tear up your asphalt driveway anyway, so they have to be careful. But uh, ultimately, he agreed that this uh, appeared adequate for the use. Uh, so we have our turnout. Uh, it's a slight extension of the pavement here, of course, to provide access to the proposed dwelling. Um, we try to uh, limit our disturbance as much as possible, and uh, that was really a natural resources issue. Um, so, uh, separate utilities for the proposed dwelling. We're going to take the electric off of the uh, existing box here. It's going to sort of run alongside the existing electric service that goes to the, the existing house. Um, this is, again, more of a natural resources issue, but we're doing extensive plantings to mitigate uh, the disturbance that we're proposing, so a little bit to the rear and then on either side of the driveway. Um, private on-site septic, we did get some comments back for the proposed dwelling, but they're very minor. It's really just a matter of shifting the system over um, a couple feet. Uh, we did get a permit for the existing house. Um, so I believe one of the recommended conditions is that it's, it's that's the first thing that it gets done, is the replacement of that existing system. Uh, but if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. But that's the gist of this. Uh, what is the grade of the driveway now as it, it's proposed? The proposed driveway is 10%. So right now it's it's about there. Um, it's a little bit flatter right now coming along this stretch and that's because it's sort of, it, it's more of a 90 degree turn. Obviously it's still 90, but we've curved it more. So we had to go a little bit steeper, but it's 10%. That's the uh, maximum that's allowed for everyone's driveway, but also for the common driveway. Right, and I thought we recently had a subdivision plan percent. that that the they proposed ten, and we the, the fire chief asked for eight, but then that was on a downhill sloped road that the and it was a road because it was a subdivision. Mm. But I just was curious. I, I guess in this case, since it's just a driveway, ten percent is adequate. Okay, well, I mean, I speak to the, that. He the didn't, comments he speak didn't. for themselves, so, he didn't right. provide any issues or concerns. He didn't raise any of them. Yeah. Those. Any other comments or concerns? It's an, exist, it's an existing driveway, and we're just saying, yes, we can use it for two. Well, they're that making some modifications, but there is already a driveway there. And I did receive uh, confirmation from the assistant fire chief that the use of the, the pavers, pavers. The, I'm going to call them plastic pavers, um, after reviewing all the manufacturing um, material and specifications were um, adequate. What are they? They're, they're what are they called? Conc concrete grass so pavers. But they're called yeah. grass. But it's so it's great. Uh, what we're great. proposing is the plot is grass paved two. That's what it's called. I yeah. don't know what grass paved one is, but this is grass paved two. We have a detail down here. So uh, Sorry, it's not down the bottom right. left corner. Okay. So you can have grass grow up in between them. Right. So they put down road base oh, just like the rest, so and then they it's pervious. Right. So they oh. put a plastic ring and they fill it with sand so that it has that strength. That's where you get all the strength. They have to install. It is not right. concrete. And you're putting it's just that's what's in our the report. Typically, they're concrete, but these are plastic. Right. So when I originally met with the uh, assistant fire chief, he said, "You know, I don't like the sound of plastic. Riverwalk used concrete. Oh. Can you use that?" So when I sent channel. him the information Different. for yeah. these plastic right. favors, yeah. I also sent him the concrete specs so we could compare them. Yeah. Um, so that's why the, it cites that. But this is the turnaround here. So oh, turn. on Sorry. this side and the low side. So. Uh, it's kind of like a diving board off the edge of this hill, <laughs> rotating walls. But uh, is so the advantage cost, it. or the their recycled material, or it what looks is a the, lot nicer? It looks so nicer. They're green, or are they? 
so you just play grass on top. Let's build grass. So, yeah. Okay. okay. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so it really is. Okay. You don't even yeah. see anything. All right. So, sorry if I miss this, but how did the fire chief get comfortable with plastic? Because uh, they yeah. saw yeah. the spec sheets. But yeah, I sent him the brochures and really just a, went over his concerns and okay. tried to, as I sort of mentioned before, they say fifteen thousand psi. That sounds insane to me. They originally Bomb had stated 5,000 PSI, which is more reasonable, but that's equivalent to what the concrete papers provide. Yeah. And that was really the center of uh, what I was trying to argue. So, and sorry if you already said this, but why are you proposing a pervious surface there versus just adding more asphalt? Um, I mean, if that's preferred, but I'm wondering, is it was because it, you have to, because of the stormwater requirements? Or, or aesthetics. Was it, so yeah. What it's motivated that, it's uh, natural resources. We had to limit the amount of impervious coverage as much as we could. Because? Uh, because we're within uh, the riverfront area okay. where there are very strict requirements. That's why we had to do all this extensive mitigation uh, all over the place. Um, so we've been over this with them, but it's it's just all about balancing areas. Okay. And then of course, nice. You wanna see more? Perfect. So. On page four of the planner's report in 11.6.3, where they're talking about the pavers, it says, um, fire chief did not raise any issues or concerns with the proposed common driveway so long as the applicant uses concrete grass pavers for the turnaround. And the but that's building. where the new information about the plastic ones okay. came in. So that's gonna change? And be, Correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Any other comments from, or questions from the board before we move to public comment? Okay, public comment. Any public comment on this? Yes. Hi, Julie McClure, 2128 Main Street. Um, here and have spoken with my neighbors who couldn't be here because they're not feeling well. They want to make sure that I brought up um, concerns because we have a common drive that's an abutting drive to yours. Yes. And just to understand, so, you know, the way, the way that this notice came through had us asking questions about how many additional dwellings it seems like in this case you're only adding one more yeah. dwelling. yes so, so this is just one um single family yeah one single family dwelling months ago we had submitted a plan to conservation that or natural resources that should, was proposing two additional dwellings um we had to adjust our a and r um so it's been a long process but it's just the one additional dwelling okay great that's really helpful because the main concern for us as butters is just like what a lot of other folks have brought up, which is traffic. And what this map doesn't exactly show is the visibility on this curve mm -hmm. on Main Street is really tricky. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's supposed to be a 30 mile per hour zone, but people are going 50. Mm -hmm. um, so adding more traffic there, I'm not sure like what that means for you know the people who live there and us. <laughs> um, so those were our main concerns. And then I haven't been receiving information about this, even though I think my count is in butter. I've been getting it only through my neighbor. I wonder if there's a way I can sign up for a contact list to make sure I get the town planner report on things like this. Because basically the neighbor just knocks on my door all the time and hands it over and says, are you going to a meeting? <laughs> so I'd love that information if possible. Um, another issue that came up is, I know you mentioned briefly about the uh, sanitation system. Yep. Could you clarify a bit more about that? Um, yeah, so it's just standard private on site septic. Uh, so one for each dwelling. Um, the system that serves the existing dwelling crosses this property line that we've created. Um, so that one needs to be replaced right here. And we have one to the rear. They're just standard septic systems, nothing. And I guess I'm just curious about like where they are in relationship to the steep grade on the rear side of the property because perhaps if people are familiar with Topo Max, it's clear when you look there exactly what that hill is like, but it's it's you can't even walk on that hill. It's very, very steep. So I just wonder about the proximity to that. Yeah, it's up top, um, where it's flat ish. Mm -hmm. uh, so that steep slope really is in this area mm -hmm. uh, and then on the front side over here. So the system's proposed right here where it's fairly flat. There is going to be some regrading just associated with um, 
building the house and creating a small yard for them, um, but it will be in a flat area. And you have a sense that it will not seep to that grade? Right, so um, it, it the system will conform to Title V requirements. The system to serve the proposed dwelling is has not yet been approved, but the adjustments we need to make are extremely minor. Um, and there are requirements related to how far away can, uh, do you have to be from those very steep slopes. So we are meeting those requirements. Thank you. Okay, any other public comment? Okay, then, um, yes? To answer the, um, the one question um, for, for anybody who's interested in receiving um, information on the town's website, if you go to the main page on the left hand side, uh, there is a button that's called Notify Me. Oops, there it is. And you can sign up and be notified um, for any board and committee in town uh, when things get posted to their websites. Um, you can sign up for when agendas get posted, when information gets posted. Um, you can you can sign up for for any of the 40, 50 committees that are in town. Um, but this is the address that you did correct. receive the legal notice. That's correct. So it was mailed to to this address. The public hearing legal notice was. Yeah, we didn't receive it. Okay, thank you. So yeah, I appreciate that. So you'll when when the board um, uh, renders their final decision and it gets filed with the town clerk, yep. um, you'll be receiving a notice of decision as well. Okay, very helpful. All right, so much like the last time, unless there's further comment, I think we want to continue the public the hearing. And yeah, I'd make a motion to continue the, the public hearing to January, or meeting on January 21st. Uh, I think um, we haven't had a discussion as to whether people are in favor or not, but I, I, not hearing objections to the plan under the assumption that we will review to approve the town planner's um, recommendation. Okay. Seven. Okay. Continue Decision. Time, time, sir. Seven. Seven. Oh, five? At the January 21st at 7.05. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. All right. Although I think Nathan already did, but that's all right. Wait, uh, he he, he first, actually then was he first. The then he kept, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So, uh, all in favor? Okay. All right. Thank you. Talk to you next time. Okay, so now we're going to move on to administrative work. Um, this is, uh, we, we have a draft recommendation letter uh, to the ZBA for our application of science development and permitting for the variance and special permit uh, for the 34 unit planned residential development, 1440 such Main Street. Um, so, how do we want to go about this? I mean, we, I, I don't know how many, I hope people have had a chance to review yes. the draft letter. Um, I did make a few copy edits, uh, proofreading kind of things, but I also had, I saw some issues that I think merit further discussion and confirmation with the board in terms of whether we actually have consensus on, on these points or, or did agree to them being in the letter. And uh, <clears throat> maybe we need to work work through those so that it can be finalized. So I'd like to suggest you go page by page, yep. paragraph by paragraph. Yep. Um, just any comments on page one? Yep, I will. I will do that. I mean, I, I personally only got to look at this right before, um, just given when we got it. So well, it's true. We only received this midday today. Yeah. So I, I do understand that uh, it could have been difficult. Which that that is an option um, for the board. You are making a recommendation to the Board of Appeals. The Board of Appeals will open the public hearing Thursday night. Um, I do not believe that they will complete they their will, deliberation. Um, render a decision the, at one meeting. Um, so. You know, if the board does feel that they need more time to 
to go through this if there are some you know, larger issues that need to be further discussed um, they can inform the board that you're there you're still working on your written decision and would have it for their um, meeting in February I would love to endeavor to get it done today and that's a backup plan if that, that would be my mindset is it okay if we, I'm just thinking we won't get to anything else perhaps, um, is that okay? Like if we- I'm Well, let's what, see how we do. I yeah. think actually the, the, the issues are pretty tightly, uh, you know, in one I part of so the report, yeah. that most of the reporters content that we've been through many times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it may not take as long as it might seem. Let's see how we do. It's only eight o'clock. The <laughs> night is young <laughs> compared to our last meeting. God, how much time do we have? Okay. All right. So, starting on page one, I, I entertain any comments that people might have. I did have one myself. It was just simply a, a, a clarity issue, which was the second bullet of the bullet to list toward the bottom of the page. I just added a comma, which. Grading of the site, comma, which requires removal. I know that that's important, but yes. Um, any other comments on page one? All right, page two. I had one thing here, which was just to create a real <coughs> numbered list. <laughs> totally trivial. Page three. Hold on, hold on. Um. I know we're not weighing in on the on the um, earth removal in terms of our recommendation. So I guess there's nothing that we can add in here other than the facts about what she has in there. Hopefully, right? Well, there's the conditions on when it can be done. <coughs> when right. the trucks run. I, I guess. I guess what I'm thinking about is qualifying it by saying, you know, does this amount of earth removal warrant a this particular proposal? But it's hopefully that that's what they will deliberate about. That's what the board of appeals right without will without any input from us. Okay. It does seem that in this plan, we're not really weighing in on it. No. Either one well, way or we, the other. Because we're not yeah. asked right. to. Right. And, but I think it's a significant yeah. thing. But, but that's one of the specific things they right. will yeah. handle. Just like, you know, they men there's a mention later on that they're seeking a variance, but there's right. we don't weigh right. in on exactly. it. I think I think those two are hand in hand about the suitability of the site for based on those two things. Yeah. In particular. Okay. Anything that in their capable hands. On page two. Move it, three. Moving oh, on. Sorry. Well, moving on to page three now. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I had another uh, tiny thing, which was to eliminate the, uh, in the next to the last paragraph, next to the last line, total of three three bedroom units. I just got rid of the comma after the first three and put a dash, dash after the second three. Yeah. So three three bedroom units, no comma. Okay. I have my first comment on page four from there. Yeah. Uh, this comment about the, the applicant will be presenting on December 18th, 2019. I had a comment there too. So that um, meeting ended up being, um, they required to be continued because they did not have a quorum. Mm. Um, so it was it actually, they will not be presenting till tomorrow night. So that should be changed. So okay. you'll just change the date. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And that's not an open ended change. Okay. I, I have a question about some wording on this page that's repeated elsewhere. Um, where, Elizabeth, where you say the outside consultant offers additional comments for various recommended conditions of approval. And that's similar to a couple other places um, where you mentioned that. Well, um, are we assuming that the Board of Appeals will 
go back in the record and review those conditions and adopt them? Or that is it just part of the record? It's not necessary to list them as conditions. Are we weighing in on whether we think those should be formally adopted as conditions? Well, the conditions are there later in the document. But not necessary. I, I'm not sure if they're all. Maybe they are. Did you pull every place that you say, you know, on maybe three or four different issue areas, you say the outside can also, as you know, a lot of other stuff they said, um, they concluded. Did you pull those all in to this document, or are they just there in this other place? So I, I, I attempted to pull in you did. As, okay. as many. Some of them, um, so for an example, the traffic consultant. Yeah, that's um, a good one, it, Not the consultant. In the traffic impact. Um, assessment uh, one of the recommendations is that all signs meet MDC you know code requirements so that that's already stated on the plans so it, it's part of the plan so it doesn't need to be referenced as a separate condition okay. or that you know they have you know stop you know appropriate stop lines um, or um, you know snow be removed at the corners when it blocks site so those are all things that are already referenced somewhere else either in the plans or in the document so um but so you went through them either they're somehow they're in here or they're already incorporated in plans or but they're not just like hanging loose somewhere we're not losing track of them i've attempted not to lose track right. of okay. them but um i can no no, no. I'm i can always go back do. through them again uh, no i'm not suggesting that you do I, i'm just understanding <clears throat> the process and so that sounds great so let's please continue. I have no other comments on this page. Okay, I have a comment, uh, which is uh, the, the paragraph that starts in a memo dated December 2nd, 2019, the public health director notes that there's out of date information in there because I don't believe that the, you know, there, <clears throat> that it's still a 90 mm. bedroom system, right? It's a smaller system at this point. It, it is a smaller system, but those revised plans um, have not been submitted to the um, Board of Health. I see. So when you say adding one bedroom to the current design, that's the current as submitted. As submitted. Though design. we, I think, okay, but the rest of it is, the rest of the plans that we've seen would imply a system that would be not at that limit. Um, okay. So I'm right. just trying to. So I can clarify that you know, that the 36 unit plans. Submitted. I think that that would be good, and that subsequently, yep. the, you know, two units have been removed, which could um, affect the results. So. And a, a statement can be added: the you know the revised plans um, should be reviewed by the public health director. Right to um, confirm the. To or Correct. two. Okay. Page five. I had nothing. Page six. Nothing. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, I, I did not have time to review much of this before this meeting. So. Um, I, on page six, I, I see, um, <clears throat> Elizabeth, you um, have for diversity, you know, that although the applicants projected sale prices below the figure, plan board recommends that the overall square footage needs to be reduced with more three class units, etc. Um, and I think when we talked about it last week, we were like, do we make this a modification or we just leave it out? Um, but did we, did we it, but maybe just to add some flavor here? Or like, what, what do you, um, like I, I wasn't sure when I got to there, like what we were saying exactly. I mean, sorry, where are we? We are sorry. in the, I think it, you're six. talking about the section 1023 diversity of dwelling units mm -hmm. and going down to the paragraph that this says the project consists of 26 yeah. single family dwellings. Thank you. I'm sorry. That's the last sentence of that paragraph. Um, I mean, I, I'm totally fine with keeping it as it is. 
I mean, that's our recommendation is the to. Um, As opposed to deciding whether to make it a modification or to just take it out. Um, but we get to it kind of other ways in the modification, so. But let's move on. Because, well, yeah, I don't, I, it's unclear to me how like nitpicky, well, I guess Matt is very nitpicky, but um, <laughs> <laughs> we should be. Um, as a, but as I'm reviewing this, I just had a comment on, on back on page, page five, sorry, and I don't know if we want to get into the weeds in this way or not, or skip to like the, the key points, but um, we just have up, up in, on page five in the last second paragraph, you know, it says, um, you know, uh, where did it go? Basically, it's saying we're generally supportive. Um, yeah, it's toward the top of the page. Where did it go? Sorry, I lost it. So Believes that with some mod re lines. recommended modifications and conditions of approval, this alternative form of development yeah. preserves open space, yeah, provides, yeah. which is basically straight from the. Okay. This is it. Oh, right. Is, is, in general, is in general support of the proposed UD. I mean, is or not. I, I, I missed last meeting, but like that sentence seems a little bit generous in my opinion. Um, so again, I don't know how much that matters in the grand scheme of this, but that it, that sentence stuck out to me. I think it's more so if conditions are met, we are generally supportive. Right. Or, or what I was thinking, and I think it it might dilute the recommendation, is that we're generally in support of a PRD there. Yeah. The, but PRD it has either. to be the right one. Yeah, and that's kind of how I read it. Right. Well, well, no, because this says ge in general support of the proposed PRD. Yeah. Of the this of this I one. See. You know what I'm saying? So we were in support. But then of the the, the rest of the paragraph is basically qualifying. Sure. Qualifying. Yeah. But but you I mean, lead with that sentence, I guess. So again, I don't know if this in the grand scheme of things matters, but. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't. I don't I, if I were Z, I wouldn't want the ZBA being like, oh, good. You know, we're good. Right, it was, <laughs> yeah. So do you? Sorry, you I want to, to change it. Yeah, because we, we this is our LA chance PRD? to change the wording um, if you want I would, to. Oh, I, I don't know if we're talking about two different things. I'm talking about the language, the last sentence on page six. Is that what? what no, 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 we're back to page Sorry. five. Okay, Haley took us back. Page five. Page six. Um, oh, we're talking gosh. about the the yeah, second. I, I, I would change paragraph it. On okay, page so five. overall, I, I would say overall the planning board is in general support of a PRD and the denser development within. So just changing a, a, a PRD and a, then a PRD development on that okay. site or something like that. At this location. At okay. this location. Yep. There you go. Okay. Oh, wow. Then then that allows us to kind of um, the the and then that the paragraph remaining... can be specific to this project. Right. Can we could we say it's in, we're in support of the the, the PRD with a modifications? Oh, that's what it says. Oh, sorry. I think you'll agree with what we just suggested. I don't know. I think APRD is goes too far. Well, I would like say what? that we would say with <laughs> the. Wait, I'm sorry. Which the sentence? PRD approach to development at the, the site. Fourth line down, basically, in the full first paragraph. Is what we're trying to. I think that the first this first sentence is trying to kind of say. This site is well suited to a PRD form of development. Maybe right. maybe that's the maybe that's the, <laughs> the way it should say, and then the planning board believes that, that you know this site is suited towards a, to a PRD form of development, um, and that with some recommended modifications and conditions of approval, it w improves open space and all that stuff. This that's really I think what we're here. trying to say there. Okay, is that work for you? So we're going with the planning, overall the planning board is in general support of a proposed PRD at this site and the denser development within walking distance. No, yeah. not um, a, I guess like I would leave the word proposed I would out. leave the word proposed out. Yeah. Right. Okay. 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 And then with the conditions of approval. Yep. Yeah. Then I put, I, I would suggest putting then this you could, proposed project. This preserves, proposed project. Right? So yeah. Now questions. you can, now you can be more Set specific. Up. Yeah. Okay. Good. I think that actually help okay so now back to page six in that uh, paragraph that started with the 26 single family dwellings um, what I was thinking of doing there was you know that sentence that talks about the 1.5 million I was just gonna uh, 
qualify a little further and just say that based on current sales data, new resident C single family construction sales prices average approximately 1.5 mil. Sound okay? And then down a little further, where it says to be a little clearer on what we're saying in that last sentence, that um, <clears throat> recommends that the overall square footage of the units be reduced with more duplex units or a triplex unit, comma, along with the inclusion of more one car garages to expand the projected price range. Okay. Just a question on the square footage range. Um, how does that sync with the bulleted list above on page two? Let's see. You mean this, there were some living square feet areas versus the let's gross floor area. So, no, okay. So these are both gross floor area, and they should line up. Yeah, the range below is much a small, it's a much smaller range. Um, let's see. Why is that? So one is gross and one is living. Is it? Oh, okay, living yeah. space. Yes, living space okay. will range. Yeah. Which okay. excludes unfinished basements and garages. Yeah. Okay. All right. So does that address your comment in that paragraph for what? Matt's changes? No, but I, I, my, my comment is just that, is this a modification? Like, but I'm not sure if my comment is valid. Is it important for each criteria that we, we make clear that we're either saying what they propose is adequate or that we're proposing a specific modification? That's what we're saying is, that, well, right. And in this case, in we're recommending the change. Okay, and so it's going to be carried down into the modification section? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And, okay, let's do that right. then. Um, I guess one thing that's not necessarily clear in this paragraph is Nathan, that, can you oh, sorry. pick up a little? Thank you. One of the things that's not necessarily clear in this paragraph is that we discussed that the diversity of price is, uh, you know, it's a function of the available units. And sure they're saying 790,000 is the low end but if there's only two units that are that size and we kind of get to that when we're saying we want there to be these other small yeah units. yeah but i think we should say it more directly um because we kind of talk the about why. the price range here and then we talk about the units here but we don't really make the connection that 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 at this point in time we don't think there is enough diversity in size to facilitate the diversity in price. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of how we. I don't have an immediate answer how to say that. I, I mean. <laughs> well, but that's what we got to do. We got to come up with an immediate answer. I mean, to me, the the well, we the, have to. although well, the applicants, okay. like by saying although the applicants projected sales price is below the figure, to. I think we are. Um, eroding what comes after that, I guess, as, as, as that being our point and recommendation. Um, because are you basically saying that the message doesn't come across for why why that's important? Yeah. Um, to, me, if you, to me, if you took out, although the applicant's projected sales price is below that figure, you would strengthen the rest of that sentence, I guess. So you're saying remove which, which like the, although the applicant's projected sale price is below that figure, like to me that implies well we're just being nitpicky and we want it below one five. Um, yeah, but I mean the previous sentence is almost I, I would say it makes it weaker because uh, the previous sentence is saying uh, you're, they're saying hey their units are two thirds of the price of the uh, you know average um, single family new home being built. And then we're going to say that they continue to reduce this further. I, I, I mean, I said before, I think it's somewhat problematic to have those estimated dollar figures in there in the first place, um, because to your point, 
it makes it look like they're cheaper than the average price, which very well may not end up being the case. Um, and it, it moves away from the, the point that most of the size and the, the, the bulk of these units skew toward the higher end, which moves away from the diversity of price. So you can show a range that could be completely fictitious and it falls below the, the median price. But that's irrelevant because you, you want to look and see. Right. So what, would you like to if, just if say that 90% um, of the houses are in that 1.15 mil range? I'm not saying that's the case, but just for examples, uh, argument's sake, is that. But then they you know have 10% that are well below in that 7 Right, right. So and that's not really diversity of price. And I think that's what we're not really. We're not right, really so you want to, well, maybe in the last sentence in that last line, instead of expand the projected price range is basically to like reduce the median price or the, mm -hmm. the average or something to closer to, you know, yeah. see what I mean? Right. More units at the lower end of the range. Right, to, because it's that's, that's a good way to say it, too. Yeah. So you know, basically to lower the median price within the proposed price range. Sure. Okay. Say that again. <laughs> Can you read the last sentence completely, please? Okay. Well, all right. <laughs> uh, although the applicant's projected sales price is below that figure, the planning board recommends <clears throat> that the overall square footage of units be reduced with more duplex units or a triplex unit, along with the inclusion of more one-car garages to uh, reduce the median average. price to more to the center of the range of projected prices, something like that. Did say provide more units at the lower end of the range? Yes. Or to, yeah, to generate more units at the lower end of the proposed price range. How about that? I, that's clear to anybody, yeah. Okay, we all right? Okay. Could we add a sentence there that says no affordable unit or no units will be affordable units? I think isn't that in the I, report I, already? I didn't see that anywhere. So uh, there was a description the of how the site evolved not. because it originally said thirty six plus one affordable and then now it's been changed to thirty four with no affordable. So that is noted in the report. Although I guess um, it might be worth adding as I mentioned again. Is it enforcing the desire where where is it in the report other than in the yeah it was right at the beginning i believe up where you if you look for 36 you'll find it i think i just searched for affordable so okay got I, it no but i didn't find it i see two really oh yeah you're right I might be searching Maybe. Yeah, this is in the oh this is in kind of the affordable no units will I be just afforded. Put, I just wrote oh. that <laughs> in my notes. Well, don't worry, it's track changes. So when I send it to you. Well, okay, but I know I read yeah, that I this. I read it to you. Yeah, so I, I like, read it somewhere. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not the word affordable. Maybe there's a different adjective. I think maybe it just said there were 36 units. And then it was but Elizabeth no. has a comment about the necessity or, or not of that. Um, yes. At, at this point. You can add a sentence stating that the project is at the basic density and that no affordable units are required. Good. Okay. If that's not there already, then I think we should go for you it. You can add it again. Yeah. Well, we should probably say they're just because, and right. also they're not. They're not. And there. this is especially, and it's it's because yeah. right. Okay. All right. Um, are we on to page seven? Um, I just wanted to change duplex to duplexes at the first paragraph next to the last line. Um, where are you? What number? Right there up on the screen. <clears throat> right above, yeah, duplex or, du you know, make it either duplex units or duplexes, right? More duplexes. Duplex or triplex units. Or, yeah, duplex or triplex units, that also works. Sure, just put an S after unit. That also works. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. This is uh, again for maybe ease of reading for the ZBA, but like, would a table be better to just illustrate the diversity instead of yeah. that writing? That? Hell, you're gonna have to speak up for this end of the table. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering, like, if I think you even had it, maybe, but um, like, just a, listed listing out the units, unit types, and count in a table rather than to to make that a table. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, I'm taking requests for any comments. I don't have comments going down through like page 11 at this point. I'm on page eight. I have one on page eight. Okay. Well, can I just add one thing while we're on the table subject? Making uh, the t there's um, more on page six just above it. Maybe make that all under one table, the square uh, square foot figure along this? with the count. Yep. Yep. That just make. So All of like that into it to, to one table. Sure. Exactly. Okay. All right. So I heard page eight. Somebody had page eight? Um, oh, God. M, M E. Yeah. Um, so the language includes neighborhood parks and it what? It describes as active recreational use. So I think, um, I don't know why we say the proposed common open space does not include any active recreational use. Um, like I, um, I would just take that sentence out and say the planning board leaves up the creation of 1.12 public park is a benefit to the neighborhood area. Or you can just say they propose a 1.2 acre neighborhood park. Well, I mean, what we're trying to do here is, you know, cover off on each criterion. So, you know, the criterion is land which is to be developed for active recreational use, including playing fields, boat launching, playgrounds. Neighborhood parks. Okay. So. We are proposing a neighborhood park. Okay. So, so are we okay with that then? Just strike the first sentence. Perfect. Okay. Next. Anything on page nine? Going once. Page 10. Page 11. Okay. Page 12. Um, I had a comment under H on Page 12, I just rephrased a little bit to say the uh, revenues associated with this development will likely not be significantly different or will not likely be significantly different, but the two doesn't need to be there. Did we? To be or we, not to be. Did we deliberate on that and determine that we, and, and do we believe that this would not be substantial? Be different? No, that's too strong. That's saying it too strongly. You met you, I think, and what I'm trying to remember the point you raised in the last meeting on cost. The, the one thing that you Well, yeah, we was, did raise the, the, that there's an affordable housing burden cost, yeah. being placed. Uh, we don't know. Uh, the model of development and that the school's yeah. impact was not I mean so those were the things we really didn't come up with it you're right that what we did lay out was um, that there really wasn't any information about sort of public services fire and EMS and all that stuff but that from a school's perspective it seemed like there the results could be potentially roughly significant roughly equivalent it was hard to tell yeah and then from the point of but what that was was clear was from uh, the impact in terms of the additional 
um, affordable units would need to be constructed to keep the town within its 40B limit was higher. And if the current cost estimated for replacing those units, it's you know around $500,000 yeah. additional cost. If I may, I'd suggest that the towns, I think that that was an excellent point you raised in the meeting and, and plays into our consideration overall. I don't think that, that a, the additional cost that will ultimately be borne by the town to stay above the 10% limit is a direct current town cost no, driven by this project. No, it's not. I mean, um, but I, I don't think that we really had any information, just even looking at school costs, we right. really had any information that would lead us to make a determ determination one way or the other. I think that the first sentence here, that we were not provided any information on the, on the direct cost. Sure. And so that we don't make any determination on this point? Uh, that, that seems uh, actually we, we probably haven't, haven't determined. accurate. Yeah. It's more accurate than what's written here. Yeah. So the only, the only um, I don't know which meeting it was, um, the board um, discussed as far as the school age children information that was provided right. as far as the other, other PRDs. I mean, you could say that we did look at these things, but didn't come to a strong conclusion. And I'm not recalling that specifically. So what information did you have? So we had yeah. the survey of the PRDs in town that showed that there were 17 school aged children in 75 units of PRD housing. However, I think that it would be easy to assume that these PRD units would tend to have more school aged children per unit than we have historically seen just by their proximity to the school, the size of the units. Um, and we, and but you know, these are all very, very fuzzy, <laughs> very fuzzy considerations. I mean, I think that it's very fair to say we can't really, I mean, we don't have anything that's strongly telling us that this is going to be more expensive, but we also don't have anything telling us strongly the other way. That's my, that's my view. So I that's would just really not make what a, we just, I would not make it. Um, I think that statement. while we, and you could say in the report, we reviewed the historic, you know, school age children in PRDs. We, you know, considered the possibilities of necessity of replacing the affordable units, um, but we did not you know, come to any real strong conclusions about any cost impact one way or the other. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm so weird. Not covering the affordable. Where are we covering covering the? Uh... Affordable unit would, the affordable unit that we, would, that we have lost basically that we'd need to make up yeah but i mean that is the case of any any base density prd yeah, yeah, but it's still what max just said he did include it in what yeah we did we did look at that i, I wanted yeah she will say we looked at the potential impact of not provide, you know, of affordable units that need to be done to meet the town's um, threshold, but we didn't really come to any strong conclusions about the relative cost of this this development, right? Bottom line costs. You don't have to put a dollar figure. You can say not right I'm, that there is. I'm a, sorry, I can't. Sorry, we don't, have, we don't have to put a dollar figure. We can just point it out as a consideration. As, as a consideration, I mean, as you point out, any development would bring that yeah. with it. And there are more units, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, you couldn't do this indefinitely and not, you know, run afoul of the ten percent. So that has to be a consideration with each additional development. As far as any. The development of any basic density PRD correct will have this yeah, effect. Just yeah, will have this affordable issue and effect on the. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I just have one. Yes, ma'am. Um, are we on twelve still? So? Yes, we are. Um, okay. I don't want to introduce anything new by any means. One thing I was curious about under K. Um, <coughs> And Where are you? K. Okay. 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 Maybe this is more of a question for Elizabeth, but I just I don't know if you're if the planning um, team uses like math the mass GIS database at all. But I had had looked at the GIS layers that the land is on, and according to the mass GIS database, anyways, 
like a lot of the property is categorized as land of statewide or local importance. Um, I mean, again, I don't know if that fits in the town, town of Comfort open space plan, which is what's referenced here, but um, didn't know if it was worth noting that like technically from a GIS perspective, like those layers are categorized in that way on the property. What does what just going off what the natural resources yeah. director states that it's not identified more, in the open yeah, space I mean, plan? I guess it's more of like a philosophical question for like anything that we think about doing, like looking at how those GIS layers are characterized. What um, what's included in that determination? Typically, I for a mass GIS, I don't know. Oh, okay. Right, but the criterion is about our town of Concord open space plan. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know if it was like worth mentioning anywhere, but in general, and in, in this. I mean, I think if we don't know what the significance of it is, then. I mean, I know in the solar world, anyways, we're talking about like it has a certain categorization on the GIS layers, no development, mm -hmm. or you know, that's like kind of what we're moving towards mm -hmm. in a way. Okay. Can, do Can we go forward? We go, oh, okay. oh, yeah. We <laughs> go sorry. back before back. we go forward. Wow. Okay. Um, back on page nine. Okay. Shoots the letters. Just, yes. I just really want to get clarification on this. So, on page nine, they have under A, B, and C, and the applicant is proposing that the con the condo association own the common open space, but basically this is saying that we're proposing that it should be held by uh, the town through the select board. Um, a restriction. Right. Not, so not ownership, a restriction. Right, that it, in perpetuity that it maintains as a, a park open for the public. Is that a, That a the restriction is yes. That, yes, but the town will not take ownership of it. Um, so the, the example is um, Comerford Road PRD, that open space area was actually deeded to the town and the town took ownership of that land. Okay, and based on our recommendation about the uh, pathway, in the, the 10 to 15 foot pathway in the back. The corridor. The corridor, thank you. That will be included in that restriction based on what we are what we are suggesting. Correct. It would be, yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure that that gets okay. included. Okay. Because it, it does say that the public open space restriction for the park. Ah, so it should be for the, it, it should be for the, for the public open common space. open space areas or what the the two because right in the back there's going to be a restrict a restriction as well right so the park is identified as that area in the front I just, that is a good catch I, I, I think. just I th I'm, my reason for bringing it up is going back to we had this discussion last time is there. On the condo docks, they are definitely going to label these as they have them here. With right. Condo or common open space easement one and easement two. And right. These two they have listed as open, open space, space easement right. one, so which would be open under something space completely different. Areas. So we should say docks. that the common open space areas should okay. be. Okay. So, so that corridor should yeah, be labeled I think that's as a, good as a, as a Rather portion than just refer of to it as the common park. open space easement two. Okay, let's, hold, hold I on. think the modification is a good place to do that. Yeah, but say. park is too narrow because park is just. Well, I agree with the change you're going to suggest. I'm also saying we can reinforce that in modifications that the corridor shall be included within the restriction. Do, can, can we establish what the restriction is, though? I think what we're talking about is the right of public access, right? That's the a restriction. open space restriction? Yeah. So I don't think we are necessarily. Oh, so that would only be on the park. Public access to this buffer zone or to the open space area that's in, in the middle of the houses. But but they act as a restriction. So my concern is that these two spaces are not part of that. So they would not be held in the restriction. So the, if the condo but, association exactly. decides to do something separately here, and for example, if the corridor was considered part of the open space and not part of the common open space easements, and as the condo docs are written, the condo association could then go and say, oh, our neighbors want to utilize that space. It's not part of the restricted space that's in the that's that's covered currently. Okay. So they could utilize it in a different way. Okay. So so a restriction that's on a requirement to maintain open space, not it's public a public access. open space restriction. How is that public open space restriction enforced in, in perpetuity? I, 
putting aside public access. Um, so that would be the same type, it would be an open space restriction and all of those, those restrictions and requirements are listed in that open space restriction. And so we're saying that, you know, the select yeah. board would have the ability, and it's also part of the special permit, they would have the ability to enforce under that restriction. The building commissioner can also enforce it as part of the special permit. Um, so, the example is um, the open space next to the church on Church Street. That is a, that has an open space restriction on it that is held by the select board. Okay. That's so, covered under 10293. Right. Did you get your question answered? No, sorry, sorry but I'm just trying to direct Burton to 10293. So I, I think both yeah. the conservation land and the public are covered there, whereas in 10292, it's just public access. Yeah, I ju that's a distinction I want to make sure we make that oh, we don't we, that we don't confuse things by suggesting that we we believe there should be public access along the corridor, no, I understand. The corridor or in the back in the back um, sloping uh, yes, green you. space. Okay. Okay. So I think we keep 10292 as is, and then we keep 10293 as is, and then in the modification, when we say 10 to 10 to 15 foot corridor, we make clear that this should be covered within the restriction that works yes. to the conservation. Board. Okay. So that's somewhere like down on page 17. Or yeah, we're so getting there. Okay. All right, page 13. I have a comment on four, uh, 10 4 2 2. Um, It's uh, basically where we uh, say that about the, the project in the middle of the paragraph, it says the project incorporates a mix of one and two car garages, which the planning board finds is sufficient parking for a residential development. Um, I thought that maybe we should say more than sufficient because we're actually trying to get them to reduce the number of garage bays, right? Okay. So instead of just sufficient, let's say more than sufficient. Too sufficient. <laughs> Too sufficient. <laughs> Excessive. No. Uh, well. <coughs> well. I mean, it's basically. I, I mean, I think this is just saying, saying is that excessive. there's adequate parking. No, but they're just saying is there. Capacity for parking, and I think more than sufficient is speaking to okay. this point. We do also say we want to re reduce garage base elsewhere. Mm -hmm. well, we have that same sentence in four two <coughs> pen four two three. Planning uh -huh. board is in general support of the proposed PRD. Like I think the revision that we had at the beginning would just replace this sentence. Well, I believe there was some recommended modifications. Uh, hold it. No, but this is, we do need to refer to this. Because we're talking about the... We're talking about the proposed PRD. This is, this is the proposed PRD that we have to... Oh, yeah, okay. Okay? okay. And it's, so we have to... Rec well, I get, but we're not in general support well, of the you, proposed PRD. You could, you could still reword it similar to mm -hmm. what we had before. You could say the planning board is in general support of a PRD and believes that with some recommendation, uh, recommended modifications, this, this proposed PRD, PRD uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Work that in that way. So you're making it clear you, you well, and want believes the, the PRD. This pro that this proposed PRD with some recommended uh -huh. modifications. Okay. Um, and I, do I mean, it might just be faster to just say the planning board believes that with some recommended modifications, this mm -hmm. proposed, you don't yeah. have mm -hmm. to. Okay. Right, because in this case, we're not really talking about mm -hmm. the suitability of the site for a PRD right. in general. Okay. Okay, um, and also under 10, uh, 10 four two one. Um, I'm not sure where these. Um, so this. 100 feet should read 14 feet, and this 80 feet should read 34 feet. Okay. 34. So we'll say approximately. 
Okay. You had something on top of 13? No. Approximately 34. Oh, about getting the numbers straight. Yeah. Um, just under 10, 4, 2, 4, C. Okay. Hold on. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> what now are we on to? 10, uh, well, actually, I had one for 10, 4, 2, 4, A, which was incomplete. Yes. It's, yes. This Definitely. says the. <laughs> oh, I was going to start the. And, and <laughs> good catch. Three, I would like you to know that three people missed that. Okay. <laughs> if the board would like to give me a sentence to. Uh, well, it, it does to the. that the the 1.163 acre public park does um, you know preserve open space between what now will be developed neighborhoods i think we can just note that but we talked about also that um, people might walk through the park for to get to the train Yeah, so that would be good back. under uh, ten four two four uh, B. Yeah. I think that that would fit best there. Um, we can also reference the isolated wetland conservation area in, in a. a. Yeah, I think that's true. Um, so, so, so for the, a, um, the one point one six four acre park. Um, and the preserve open space between <coughs> developed neighborhoods and what did you want to add how about um the proposed common open space it, oh, is that what the at the okay. yeah at the north end of the property you know maintains a a, a buffer between the neighborhood and well the railroad and the mm -hmm. park a covenant connection between existing provides a connection between the, okay, the that town land better. and the adjacent open provides. Yeah. Okay. That was A. And then B, we were going to add a sentence about um, the West Concord neighborhood area um, and could provide a, you know, a, a pedestrian path for neighbors going to town or something like this to the point of point a um do we need to have any language in there saying pending the inclusion of the corridor Does that provided mean? that the corridor is yeah, the modif it's complete the provided the modification yes. the quarter modification is completed sure modification. sure okay um i leave this to matt on the grammar side but and b is should it be that the planning board believes rather than which? That which always has a comma in front of it. But only, that is the simple rule. Only, so only if you were directly referring to the, it, right, and so it's a, it, dependent versus independent clause. So <laughs> where are you that uh, I think that is what we meant here. Where, where are you now? Um, instead of which? Instead of which? Unless you want to reorganize the sentence. No. <laughs> that was a uh, ten four two four B. Which is getting changed to a that. That's right. Um, but to finish up B. Okay. <laughs> and could provide a um, pedestrian yeah. path to of West Concord Village. Right. For neighborhood. For neighbors. Right. Yes. For the neighborhood. Second for the nearby yeah, nearby that neighbors or second something. Second sentence. That's yeah, a second sentence. If you want. Okay. In in C, um, I was just going to suggest in that last sentence, um, again, since this is all contingent on with the modifications, like the planning board believes that only with the recommended modifications would, you know, this meet the long range land use plan. It's, I just like want to strengthen that a bit. <clears throat> okay. I'm all right with that. Everybody. Yeah. The project conforms is a bit too definite. I don't know. Alan, you're going to have to really speak up. 
uh, in that sentence, uh, the project conforms. Uh, I don't know if it, it gets closer to conforming to the uh, town long range land use plan, but I don't know if. Uh, Let's see, it talks about, well, the, the criterion is conforms, recognition project. I mean, basically, it gets closer to the long range plan, but not. it's not as definitive, I think. Well, the comprehensive long range plan does not provide specifics on how the project gets laid out or um, building yeah. type or it, it, the long range plan did specifically select this site as an area for a more dense PRD. Yeah, but I mean, if you think about the land conservation and sustainability, certainly I could imagine a project that went further on both of those right. and the cluster fronts. housing and everything. Um, so, how about instead of saying the project conforms, you say the project reflects elements of the town's long range plan. or meets the basic or <clears throat> the, 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 because to Elizabeth's point, the long range plan, the, the long range plan is is. Uh, general in nature. Right. It is general, but it is also aspirational. And, and it's, it's, it's this is the comprehensive long range plan? Yes. Well, yeah. Emphasizes yeah. sustainability and everything. Yeah. So I, I do think it, you're right. I mean, if we Alan, see it conforms, I mean, that's fine. So it reflects yeah. elements of the town's long range plan. Yeah. Okay. Only with the recommended. That's a good <laughs> 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 That's already there. That's, that's in the first part of the sentence. Okay. So, uh, moving to 14, um, I have some comments on 10426. I assume other people might too. I, I do. Okay. Um, so, so, Elizabeth, thank you. You see, you put in the deletion on the plans of any provision for fossil fuel tie ins. That was a very difficult conversation to follow. So, yeah. yeah all I, I ended up doing was writing one sentences and so it certainly you, gets you us can, the opportunity can. to discuss further. Yeah, yeah. So, so we've got two questions. Um, I presume that deletion on all plans for fossil fuel tie-ins or utilities means that those cannot <clears throat> then be built. Is that accurate? That would be our recommendation. I got that part, but um, so I under I um, you can. That, that would mean these are the approved plans and this is what is approved right. for the utilities. Um, understanding, I think your point, five years down the road, 10 years down mm -hmm. the road, 15 years down the road, uh, yeah. I'm not gonna be here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, and, so, and I, I think it's unlikely once you put in the infrastructure for uh, alternative. Um, well, people are extending gas mains all the time, so um, uh, an option would be to have that reflected um, as a condition of approval, which I, I thought it was, but I thought it was also stated in the conditions um, that it would be incorporated into the condo docs. I was just curious about your choice of words. Can we look at that? I agree with that. Can we look at the language in the condo docs. Can you direct us to that? <coughs> At the same time that we're reviewing this. Um, yeah, so it's currently, it would be condition 24. So currently it's not in there. So you could add that, that whatever language you decide. Oh, it's uh, not in it right now. Mm -hmm. No, it can be oh, added thanks. as item J. Okay. okay. Um, I think that that would be great. My, but my, my other second point, just more general, is the other elements here that we've called out as our recommend, recommendations are tied to specific section, the specific discussion higher up on the PRD going as we go through the regulation. I brought up the, um, the fossil fuel piece in connection with, in response to language that's in the preamble to the PRD bylaw and also the special permit um, requirements language. Um, that Those two things are reflected in your report, but they, they, they don't appear to be part of the letter of recommendation. My concern is just that this point 
the second point, uh, <coughs> deletion on any plans. There's no other discussion of it. So if I'm on the zoning board, I might be thinking, why are they calling this out? And what, how does this, how is this a, um, a, a requirement? What, uh, under what statutory authority do we have to place the, re the requirement on the development? I think there is authority in that preamble and in the, the reference to town ecology and more specifically in the, in the special permit section regarding uh, talking about the uh, the environment as it's worded in that in, in, in the, the considerations to be made when granting a special permit um, I well you can also include it in just your last discussion under the long-range plan okay I, I anywhere I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be uh, care too much I just want to make sure that support. when this goes there, there, there's supporting language uh, that, that ties in mm -hmm. some discussion as to the what, what at least I believe is is the authority under that spe the, the decision making uh, room we have under the special permit granting language and I can I can refer to that specifically, but you, you know, because you, you've ha you've got it in, um, you know, under it says under a special permit, we we need to consider each of the following um, impacts on the natural environment and fiscal impacts. Include, uh, sorry, yeah, just impacts on the natural environment. So, I'm not sure how we tie that in. I mean, I'm generally not a huge fan of footnotes because people will blow right past them, but. What both points one and two would you could use the same references for? Um, I right. Let's see. Yeah, or up above, as Elizabeth said, in in the long range land yeah, use I would, plan I section. Would just, just say I would just include it says, a statement yeah. under the long range plan section. Okay. Yeah, like the Conquer, the town of Conquer prides itself on being a front runner in advancing environmental sustainability policies. Blah blah blah. Whatever is like verbatim from the long range plan. Uh, yeah, but I, I, I think it's very important that we, that we, really make a focal point of that within the recommendation portion itself. Yeah, um, because it does tie all of that together, and as as Bernie was pointing out, is really the basis for for those. So under ten four two four C conforms to the town's long range plan. Um, okay. Or in, in conforms it well. So the, it is. This is separate and above. Con, the, the long range plan, of course, talks about um, uh, reducing fossil fuel use, yes. and 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 is, it goes into much greater depth. I think what we should should be pointing to is the special permit granting language that says we need to take into account um, the impacts on the natural environment. Yes. Eleven six five. Okay, so um, we can we can go through and add all of the special permit criteria and the statement under each of those um, to your recommendation as far as your analysis i mean it's not it's not required but does anybody else have a view on how we should address so this so you're talking like 10426 in general like restructure not just as it relates to the no he's uh, talking about so part of the board of appeals special permit they will need to make the required find the required findings under special under the special permit um, and we don't supply criteria. a separart document for special permit a sort of separate report no this is our this letter. Is the recommendation our letter, letter right yeah. yeah and then um, and then they go about yeah finding so so why um, is it because everything that we need to address the special permit we consider already in here is that why we don't specifically call out 11.6 as we do here in, for each item well, it's just that the the bylaw, the section ten, you know, you tells what plan. our report has to say, and it doesn't okay. really go to these points. Yeah. But 
it is true that the <laughs> the ZBA is going to have to come to some decisions on these things. And so to the extent we can give them some input, that's helpful. Right. I think giving them the guidance of where they can reference to or a reason for having these in here gives them more authority to, you know, stand on those points mm -hmm. as opposed to the long range plan, which Right. But how do we, we do that? We, we, we how do we do that efficiently? In, yeah, accordance, exactly. In accordance touched, with, with 11 point. Without <laughs> redundancy, because we, we've touched upon these things throughout the letter. Well, many of them, if not all of them. Redundancy is not necessarily awful in this case. To be what, what we haven't, the only one I care about in terms of the special permit elements is impact on 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 the uh, natural environment, and the reason that's the only one I care about is because I think the other ones that yeah, are are otherwise generally talked about in our PRD criteria. Mm -hmm. That one is ties into the some purpose. language in the preamble and the purpose statement, but um, that purpose we don't revisit and discuss. Um, so. Even if we expanded this sentence, the deletion of on all plans of any provision of the fossil fuel tie-ins or utilities in order to for the for the project to to meet the requirement of a special permit that it that, um, you know uh, to meet the special permit requirement that right that in in consideration of the project's impacts on the natural environment some 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 discussion referencing that specific statutory authority. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So maybe that's the simplest that's thing to do. So, so Elizabeth, in, um, let's see if I'm gonna maybe you turn on red lights. Something like this, uh, 11 points, let's see, 6 5. Okay. Um, so, the deletion on all plans of any provision for fossil fuel tie ins or utilities in order to reduce the project's impact on the natural environment in consideration of section 11.65 in the special permit. Something that's a gist? So, I, um, I think that's fine. It's your you know, recommendation letter, I think, um, to Nathan's point, tying this back into the, the body of, of, of your analysis before you get to the recommendation. So including some type of sentence under the long range plan, where, you know, one of the main, main elements and big ideas in the long range plan deals okay. with sustainability and, you know, impacts on the natural environment. Wait, and, and my, my point was to actually have it in 10.426 cuz cuz I think tying it to the long range plan is it, it having a statute that we can point to well, is I think much can, stronger I think than and and putting it at that point no, so I, it's like a very I, strong I, I, focus well but that. hold it how about even just back on uh 101 under purpose where we say, you know, with these modifications and conditions of approval, that the this thing will preserve open space and so on. Don't you want to just add the criterion there that that basically our modifications are going towards? So the the nothing in the purpose talks about sustainability. 
Okay, but I thought you had this sentence or, that you were talking about the environmental. Impact. That's from the statute. And, and the statute, the purpose, the purpose it means, means it mentions ecological impact. But ecological I, I, impact. I, I like See, Elizabeth where you're going with this. I think that what we can say is in the in the discussion of the long range plan. The long range plan. Um, uh, w which section is that? Here, it's ten four. Ten four two four. Ten four two. Four C is that right? Four yeah. C. Yeah. So in t I think maybe it's a sentence that you know it says long range plan ha um, contains you know goals of uh, however we want to state this you know, but decarbonization or moving to renewable renewable energy sources and and the special permit granting authority requires a consideration of a project's impact on the natural environment. We. Tie that to the specific statute as illuminated by the as the way to interpret that is illuminated by the long range plan. Do we need to demonstrate anywhere that um, the mandating electric only moves us towards that? There's, um, there's no there's no mandate in the long range plan, but you know, right. right. mandating it as a modified reference to the statute. And, and is it's important. nowhere in the report. It seems yeah. like we need to bridge. But the, the long range plan has specific goals and action items regarding um, sustainability, re reducing carbon footprint. Yeah, with, and, and so does it say reducing the amount of homes using natural gas appliances? I, I don't know if it has a specific action item for that off the top of my head. I know there are specific action items dealing with reducing. Don't look at that. I'm just, I, my concern is that the long range plan as aspirational as it is a clever attorney would be able to you know push that aside whereas the statute we but can i think point we're doing to, both is what we're saying right but by having the statutory reference in the recommendation portion as well we can have it in multiple places it drives home to first off you know the goal of this board and you know guides the ZBA on what we're trying to do and under what authority they can make you know push on those items so if, if that matters to us and we want to see that uh, you know no fossil fuel hookups are put into this development that's the language that we need to reference that gives the footing to do so I, I think Burton. Yeah, Burton I think my head is it. Yeah. Do you, can you maybe restate? Um, so I'm, I'm coming up with, you know, the comprehensive long range plan incorporates specific goals and action items regarding sustainability, reduction in and I'll, and I'll pull the exact words out of the plan. I think it's reduction of greenhouse gas emissions yeah. and um, non-carbon emitting. Yeah, yeah. Just pull so the whatever the language yeah. is in, in the plan. Um, and the special permit granting authority under the special permit criteria. And I can't remember. 1165. Um, 11.6.5, addressing the impacts on the natural environment, wait, wait. Planning, wait. the planning board recommends the, um, that there be no fossil fuel tie-ins or utilities. I think that's the gist of it, yeah, great. I might switch that around just so it know. sounds it like English, bit. but. Yep. I, don't think, I know this is really silly, but it, when I read no fossil fuel tie-ins or utilities, I was like, didn't understand that you were saying no fossil fuel utilities. So I, do you know what I'm saying? So again, <laughs> Um, this was a very difficult. No, I know. I'm just. I'm just. So no, I if somebody wants to give me better words. So is why is why did you choose to write the deletion on all plans for, mm -hmm. versus 
So versus saying um, the development shall be constructed oh, using that, yeah, only. No, that's, oh, is there? Yeah, yeah you were can, you avoiding? Okay. No, you can you the. You can say the project I'd rather shall say not. Like what the effect yeah. of deleting it on the plans is versus saying, like calling out the actual deletion. Uh, Burton, do you? Um, well, you're basically care? just saying it has yeah. to be. I think all we left. just reworded that. Yeah. Oh, I didn't. I wasn't aware that we reworded it. So you can you can. So it says, you're you're making modifications, um, smaller units, incorporation of. More one car garages include just more duplexes. Um, you, know, you can you can phrase it in the positive. Say the, um, the project use of be only both. use of only electric utilities. Utilities. I, I would still say with no fossil fuel tie-ins. Well, it's a bit confusing because until mm -hmm. the, the MLP. Becomes well, uh, uh, yeah, you could renewable. I mean, it's you could have a, a buried propane tank. Yeah. Oh, I see. And that's not a fossil fuel tie-in. Mm. Okay. So now, so yeah, yeah, so we're going to phrase it in the positive. The, the use of only electric utilities. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. It's unambiguous. Um, and I will I will carry that statement over to the previous sentence we were talking about under the long range plan. Great. Just a clarifying question on A, B, and C above. Um, is, are we leaving it open to like interpretation for like CB. how to reduce or like the extent of duplexes or triplexes versus like recommending like X Y Z number? Is that the um, idea? Correct. Yeah. Like if, if they go from one like one two car garage unit down then reduce that to like one car garage, technically that's more one car garages. If left open to interpretation, I guess. Um, so you're gonna leave it open to interpretation for the special permit granting authority. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Um, I recommend for number one, um, just adding for to increase diversity and to reduce overall the amount of impervious growth. Like just add. It says it above, but oh. So sentence one, near this, it says the overall, so the overall reduction. I'm sorry, what, what, what change are you? Making? So in number one, it's just, it's a really meaty one. And it's, it's bucketing it all, all under the need to reduce impervious coverage, where we really have a lot more that we're trying to accomplish. So just add the words and increase diversity. Yeah. Okay. And even rather than impervious coverage, I would say like the developed area of the site, maybe. That could, but I just, just add, I, that's the most important thing is to add diversity. Yeah. I, I would say unit diversity. Increase. Increase unit diversity. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then in three, um, thank you for doing this, Redu like reducing my six paragraphs down to one intelligent sentence. Um, can we add here the the corridor shall be subject to the same the, the restriction covering common open um, space too? So yeah, it would uh, a ten to fifteen foot natural green space corridor. Connection. I, I think it's perfect way to just add um, another sentence on the end. Oh, oh what sorry, but whatever you want to do. Oh, I was just going to say um, as as <coughs> part of the perfect. Open space. Yes, as part that. of the yeah, yeah. open space. Perfect. Yeah. And I mean, 
since we're on it, say a 10 foot to 15 foot natural green space, I feel like, let put a figure. Like, <laughs> if we say 10, they're definitely going to go 10. If we want 15, say 15. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. The, the original idea was to make it subject to the recommendation of the uh, NRC. Yeah. yeah. And so maybe we can, can we, is that useful at this point to say as, no, sorry, I don't know. 15 foot plus. Mm. <laughs> um. but, I mean, it really does need to be based upon, I think, the NRC director's recommendation. It, we don't have it, the expertise it, it was, to be It was my yeah. thought that providing that flexibility lets them move yeah. things around as far as the building and the exclusive use areas, and it might be 15 at one point and 10 at another, yeah. and... Um, they might need it. They might need that, like five feet somewhere, to make it feasible. So, um, I mean, this—that is a concept that the Natural Resource Commission is also looking at. So, um, <coughs> do I don't, I don't think they're going to make it ten all the way. I do think we? they're going to do some five. But that's it. Uh, I'm, you, I'm you, you can state, you know, <laughs> is, as as required or recommended by NRC, but yes, I, 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 would, know I don't wish to confuse your recommendation yes. with theirs. That, well, that was going to be my question, is there, has there been anything from the NRC? It will Tomorrow be. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, yeah, okay. I've just been looking through what the long range plan says about carbon or sustainable housing, residential. Um, best thing I've found so far is page 71. Um, in particular, adding a range of housing choices, including sustainable, passive, or net zero, young family slash workforce house, workforce housing, can set a model for all housing development in the town and put concrete at the forefront of innovation in this area. And I would be happy to incorporate that entire sentence into ten four two four C. Okay. Statute. I didn't pull out other language though. I think this right up top about more just generic like goals of a you know. 80% reduction by 2050 from on greenhouse gas. Not specific to housing, but. I, I, I would point out that <laughs> any any applicant, if we're not pointing to something that is statute, if they don't want to do it, they're just going to say no. So yeah, well, that's, that's great. Yeah, but long? it's <laughs> that, that most, of, <laughs> most of what's here is saying encourage, provide yes, incentives. Yeah. The commitments are on the municipal side. Yes. Yeah. They're not on the residential side. I mean, if you look at, I mean, everything I've read so far. It, this is not. A I mean, it's amazing how fast the. So we don't need to get into a philosophical. I'm just saying that not a things have moved along pretty fast law, to even would, sense this was written. They would say no and they would fight that. Yeah. So that's why it's very important that anything that we're going to point to be statute because well, that is the ground that we stand on. The, the, the statute requires us to uh, re to take into account the long range plan. Yeah, I wanted to have two tie ins, so that it is why I like Elizabeth's suggestion. It, it, we're talking about meeting our obligation to consider the long range plan, which is a specific requirement of the PRD, and also, as I think you're getting at, the the permit special permit granting language. Right. Um, but the the long range plan is is just. Um, one step further removed, but it's still a requirement of the statute that we take in, that we take that as, as a reference. Yeah. I question how it would hold up. Yeah, it's um, a goal of the plan, not. A, yeah. So right below that is number four, um, and um, what was sent to the board? It was on. The second I did not um, is when I finally received a comment letter from engineering. Um, so they had their standard conditions, which have been incorporated in here. And this was this was a, this is something new. Yeah, I was going to say I don't um, recall yeah. anything about <laughs> this. Yeah. That was my comment. This, this seems the new. First time, <laughs> this is the first time that the engineering division has actually even looked at a landscape plan, I believe. Um, so this doesn't have to be incorporated into this part. It can be tweaked to just be actually just be a condition that 
Um, it seems like a condition more than a modification. Yeah. And so the, the wording of this would change to reflect this, um, the similar um, standard development of a condition. It would be, um, you know, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the there we applicant go. shall amend the landscape plan to show that public shade trees, blah, blah, blah. I, I think that's better because, especially given that we had not discussed it before, it would be rough to put it here. Mm -hmm. That works. Okay. Okay. Are we ready to go down to the conditions? Um, my, I, I was thinking number one seemed out of place, out of sequence. Um, you know, you've got this, I don't know, I, I thought that it seemed like your conditions were roughly in chronological type of sequence, you know, prior to the commitment, commencement of any site work. And then I think you would have something that would say during construction, at all times during construction. Um, but this is, this is at all times. It's so when they, you know, prior to their, you know, they do this, you know, the grubbing and the clearing, they're going to have people out there installing fencing. And so that's why we place conditions that. Okay. So this is just normal. That, yeah, conditions that are throughout the whole entire thing. And it's just at all times, um, we <clears throat> usually put those first. Okay. All right. Any, I, I, now I don't have any other comments until I get to page 18. I don't know if anybody else had something. Or, or questions on, um, I, did, did I see something, and I'm sorry if it's here, about the planning board weighing in on the street drain? Um, that's, that's way back on, or like page three. Did we do um, that? That was, that was something that the planning board never even talked about. Oh, I thought um, we, I thought it was brought up at one of the meetings. And how about the um, park? Can we weigh in on the meeting of the park? It's already named. Um, it's already named. Well, it, no. The <laughs> well, no, the planning board, it has the, um, the responsibility for street names is, and that oh, okay. comes from under like subdivision control. Oh, right. and that's Can we still where, do that or it's too late? Um, What's it named now? There, there is no name to the roadway, um, but generally the um, there is always input from the historical commission and the fire chief okay. on road days. Um, I think if the planning board has um, you know, a few recommended names to be further discussed with the historical commission and the fire chief, that that's not um, <coughs> that wouldn't be a problem. Um, I believe the applicant has already proposed, you know, it's Daniel Hayes Park way oh for the street for, for the, the park for the, for the park. park sorry okay it sounds like this is something that is not that's not really good to do right now and maybe it could have been, um, been done before like um, in the previous 18 no, months um, 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 I don't know if anybody has, has any suggestions I, I'm curious can... now <laughs> Part of, did you have no, Something well, I don't something oh. that we want to advocate for, like long range plan way <laughs> <laughs> or energy efficiency drive or um, or I don't I don't know. No, so like so kind of typically, kind of fun. typically road Maybe names, um, there's usually uh, um, a review of the history of the site. Well, that's OK. And, and sometimes it's like what used to be here, which is sad. And what used to be like there don't or run way. <laughs> well, <laughs> so. OK, so let's but, keep going because it's but so similar to the, the PRD at 430 Old Bedford, um, the history of the site. And um, so that's that's generally how they have been named. Okay. Um, and then input from the fire department as far as emergency response, that it not be confusing, um, similar to something else. Okay. Um, I, I can tell you there will never be another road in this town that uses the word black. Mm -hmm. um, since we now have um, black duck, black horse, and black birch. Mm -hmm. um, but so, let's move on. Okay, Bye, yeah. Amy. Okay, Matt, what was your comment? If no one else had any comments prior to page 18, it was just in, in B, there's just a typo that there needs to be a space in okay. and A requirement. And, and in section D? Um, the, there's a 
a so, word missing. Yeah, and I have, um, so on page 18. Yeah. Okay. All right, so before you get to 18, um, the, um, on condition 22, um, so it, it should read, um, may not exceed 87 bedrooms. Mm -hmm. There's, you mean 23? Tw on t condition 23. And that's that's 87 bedrooms connected to the on-site sewer dispose sewage disposal system, mm -hmm. because the master deed will also include those units that will be tying into town sewer. Right. And then what about D then on? Yep. And the same thing for the same thing for that language D. That we're that's missing the same word. It says the applicant shall submit specifying the maximum number of bedrooms allowed in each unit collectively may not exceed 80. I'm going to say that collect that collectively make up the de the development or the maximum number of bedrooms allowed in all units collectively. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and um, then uh, that are connected to the sewer, right? Because that's just the ones connected to it. Or I mean, sorry, to the sewage system, the septic system, septic system. Yep. Yeah. And, and then just okay. make the exact the same, same change. Okay. Same on D. Okay. Yeah. And then here it would, I think, I, I take your suggestion of um, a statement limiting um, fossil fuel, fossil fuel utilities. So we, we phrased it in the positive that the project shall utilize all electric utilities. That's fine. And, and you can put paren, no. Well, I'm just thinking about what the wording is going to need to be in the condominium dock, and there it's going to need to be a prohibition, right? But okay. um, I, th I think it should be, it should be a, prohibition. a prohibition on fossil fuel utilities. I don't want to say on all fossil fuels, um, because it'll take away people's barbecue grills and then they'll really get angry. But okay. um, fossil fuel utilities. Okay. Is, are there electric, um, non-fossil fuel, non-electric utilities that are um, an alternative renewable thing that is used? So that's why, I guess, that's why I think it's better to just do a prohibition of fossil fuel rather than okay. like prescribing all electric, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, like well, there, the utilities, I think, would be... Um, so, so like so geothermal, you know? Or, yeah. I, I do think we're going to electrification, so I do think we will, it, it is worth calling that out in the positive. I but can, I, okay, I, I, I don't can, want to, I can, I can I think include it's both. both. I think both is Okay. I just don't want to mistakenly clear. right um, eliminate options for things that are not electric, but that I don't. I, I mean, I, I, I think to, that's the intent. I think to provide to fossil fuels. So the, with clean energy, it's um, really um, Development shall utilize all electric. Mm -hmm. Utilities and prohibit fossil fuel utilities. I am in favor of that. Yes, this is a new one. This is a new one. This is being put in. You're adding under. It's a new condition. Twenty-four J. You could have a central wood-fired heat heat plant. <laughs> well, there'd be a greenhouse. We got. It's already been a long night. I retract. Wait, hold, on, hold on. Hold on a second. If somebody has geothermal. A wood geothermal. Well, That's electric. 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 But is a well. So are we okay, I guess it depends. I mean, uh, I, I don't. I don't. No, I, no. I think we're going to do. Um, what do you call those? Wood stuff. Wood stuff. Oh, I, I don't think most people would it's, consider that a utility. It, it's, right. It's, okay. Even though it could be used as your power by electricity. Power. Okay. Too okay. many conversations happening at once. Um, and we're not intending to prohibit that because it's not a fossil fuel. It's carbon neutral. Are we talking about wood? Yeah. Yes. It is. Well, okay, moving within on. a <laughs> within a fifty year lifespan, as opposed to a million year lifespan. Page nineteen. Yeah, I have no further comments. <laughs> on 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 the remaining pages. Yeah, I'm done. Or yeah. for the rest of the night? <laughs> no, no, just for Mic drop. the rest of these conditions. I'm okay with. Seeing if others. This Maybe. was a hard one to do over the holidays. Elizabeth worked a lot of the weekend to do it. Thank you, Elizabeth, for this. Yes. 
So I guess the now we have that question of did we get uh, things that were concrete enough and do we feel confident enough about them that we could designate a member of the board to work with Elizabeth to review and confirm that our comments have been incorporated and then to submit the report? Or do we need to come back in the next meeting and review the final report to see whether there are any issues? Review the final report. Well, the, the, I think that what I would say is that while we can technically submit it later, the influence of the report will be reduced the later it goes in. Agreed. And so I would okay. actually, I felt that we actually, I, I don't feel like there was a lot of ambiguity left in the, the comments that we made tonight and that Kristen was taking good notes and that uh, we could as clerk. Have the Before clerk. Thursday? I'm not clerk anymore. Oh, I'm doing it. <laughs> oh, in that case. We're talking about, about what, are you, what are you making <laughs> these the changes? the one thing we were talking um, about. The, the changes will be made tomorrow morning. All right, so it needs to be, but we're, we're proposing reviewing it and then giving no, it. One, one member. I mean, one, one, one member of the board. One, but, but I mean, so that it, the ZBA can have it on Thursday. Correct. I'm, I'm in favor of. I, I am in favor of that too, rather than us reviewing it all together. I, I think meeting. it. I but, think it makes but, sense. If it is burden doing it, I'm okay with it because yeah. it's it's on the point that we were talking about. That Very good. We're aligned. Or, or do you have time to do that? Or? Sure. That would be great. Okay, so I think then we're ready to have a vote um, and a, a motion um, that would need to. Uh, designate burden, right? And then typically um, you authorize the I mean, same as endorsement, but authorize the town planner to sign on behalf of the board. Okay. Anybody? The, the uh, I'm just trying to figure out exactly what the vote here is. So I make a motion that we we direct the town planner to prepare a, uh, a, 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 revised, a, a recommendation letter as revised uh, in nope, so for you discussion don't, yeah, you don't, no? um, you're, you're, you can vote on your recommendation, which be, would be to the Board of Appeals for um, to uh, grant the special permit with modifications mm -hmm. you know, as subject to, to conditions the, of approval as, as written in the letter with as revised, revised this, this evening, evening and, and a point yeah authorized and authorized went to review the revised letter and the town planner to sign on behalf of the board Play that back. Okay. okay okay i make that's a the motion i make a motion that we um recommend a yeah. there we go you've got the form all right, recommend to the Board of Appeals the approval of a special permit to develop the 34 unit planned residential development pursuant to zoning bylaw section 7.5, earth removal section 10, PRD section 11.6, special permit and section 11.7 variance at 1440 through 1450 Main Street as, as described in our letter of recommendation with modifications and conditions as specified in the letter to, to with the changes discussed the tonight to be yeah. to be reviewed by myself, and 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 that we provide we authorize the town planner to execute the letter on the planning board's behalf. That's the longest one motion we've had in a long time. Um, anyone want to second that? Okay, Alan seconds it. All right. So, all those in favor of this motion. All those opposed? Okay. Okay. Uh, I think we're done with that item. So let's move on to our next item on the agenda, which was uh, draft 2020 annual town meeting zoning bylaw amendment discussion. 
so we got a few revisions and to talk about. Uh, Do we want to take a three minute break? Yes, I'd just love to get a sip of water. <laughs> just, oh. Do you want to take, are you taking a break? Yeah, okay. just a three minute break, just so we can. Yeah. <laughs> Do all of these need to be Huh? Do all oh, of these yeah. need to be done? Well, yes, this is our last. Close? The warrant closes on the 10th. Yeah. So, unless we meet on the 10th okay. for breakfast, <laughs> we don't have time to notice a meeting and have it. On the 10th? Well, I mean, sure you do. between now and then. I, but it's not I don't think we want to. No. Okay. I, don't I, don't, think we, I don't think you're having this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so so I'll just email it to you in the morning. That's See, great. I'll have it done. Uh, I have uh, I I don't have a very busy day tomorrow. I have a, <laughs> I have one meeting tomorrow. Um, first thing in the morning. Okay, so. This additional addition. This photo is very drafty. Okay. Oh, no, it's Are, the windows. Is the only, so, oh, go ahead. Is the only thing we're talking about with respect to the bylaw amendment is the this PRD thing that you sent around uh, yesterday? Well, you're, you're, you have to go through each Are we assigning eight of these oh. and have to move second and assign. We do that now. You don't have to do that now. Okay. No. But you have to you know, move to place on the one. So, yes. to start my car. Yeah. And let's say you know, put it in reverse. No camera comes on. I back up yeah. and I put it in drive. And it takes like 30 seconds or so for the camera to turn off. Turn off. My car does that too. Freaks me out. <laughs> it does, it's not immediate on mine, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's 30 seconds. It's, it's, it always does kind of feel like maybe it's a little longer than it needs to okay, be. Okay, so it's not just that, my that, car. It's okay. also like if you do something like. Um, You're going back and forth. Well, yeah, like if, if I'm going into like do, fiddle with it, where well, you can't do the radio <laughs> while, the, while the camera's on it, right. vice versa, if you get the cam the radio, if you're fiddling with the radio, then the camera won't be in <laughs> It's just kind of a kind of a laggy system, oh, at least okay. in my car. Well, it's, it's kind of freaked me out a little bit. I, mean, if I put my car in reverse and the camera comes on, and then I put it in drive, mm -hmm. and I can I can drive like halfway down the block before the camera goes away. Yeah. So I'm looking, you know, behind also, me. But you're looking you don't out have the windshield. The remote start, right? <laughs> on the phone. But do you use it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I was thinking that if you're just getting in and starting it, it's even like takes even longer for that system to sort of boot up, and yeah. maybe that was impacting okay. it. Oh. All right. Here we go again. Missing a couple numbers. Yeah. What were you saying earlier about it only being eight o'clock? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, we could, we, we've got a quorum, we can get started on the discussion. Um, so, uh, let's begin, we can resume the recording and let's uh, start discussing these bylaw amendments. So, we have a few that uh, came back with revisions. I think that, why don't we just to tackle the biggest one first, the PRD. Um, so one, um, 
um, as far as what the board needs to do tonight is um, actually you know, go through each of the eight. Um, oh, and we need to vote. And, to... and then move second and vote to um, move forward and place that um, on the warrant or okay. submit it as a warrant article. Um, so if you want to start with the biggest one, I think, is the PRD. Yeah, I think that while we're freshest, so everything's relative, um, we should probably go after the PRD. Okay. Um, so I think that, you know, we discussed last time most of these proposed changes. I think the biggest thing is the 10236, uh, section 10236. Did, is there, before we get into that, is, was there any comments on any of the other aspects of the revised bylaw? I don't think that much else has been changed. I just had one question and I missed last time, but um, just up above, I can't necessarily think of an example that it, this would matter, but I see we use we went with the term green building practices up at the, the very top. Um, is there, that versus like just, I think we had sustainability maybe before, um, or use that word in particular. I just was curious if a decision was made for one or the other, and if there would be a, any reason to go with one. Well, yeah. green building practice is more specific, I think. Mm -hmm. And then isn't there a definition you proposed? Found. We we found a definition, but did, we, did it get put into here? Because I know that we have other definitions yeah, the, that are in the, here. The sustainable the, design requirement. Uh, which is section two, as, as I two remember, was including incorporate low impact development, but was clear was clearly defined, but, defined, but not, not necessarily green, green building. building practices because that's not an actual defined term. And what about energy efficient building design, which you do have identified here? So instead of green building, building design, practices, energy efficient building design, energy efficient design. Um, but green building also encompasses like material selection. Yeah. And stuff like that. It does, but do you? I'm. Um, um, you care about that? No, I mean we do, but I'm just trying to think about what what the overall goals are and how much we're going to be able to see and and weigh. Like, do, is this board going to be able to uh, evaluate the the material building materials themselves, or is it just going to be the submission of them as good enough? I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like the green green roofs is, I guess, one thing that would come to my mind that would be included, obviously, in like energy efficient. Hmm. I mean, if you really stretch the interpretation, maybe. But, but, but I mean, are we seeing green roofs for residential development? You might like to. If you're in like a place that's solar, or you're heavily heavily forested or whatever, and you can't do solar. So do we just stick with green building design yeah, then in the general term? Even though we don't provide clarity by what we mean, people would have to infer based upon the many definitions that are out there, I think. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's in other towns' bylaws. Yeah. So I think it was wrong about saying that we should keep low impact development capitalized. I think you're right. I think it should go lower gates. Is that the little bit that generally? I thought that was. But I thought we have it as a defined yeah. term in our bylaw now. Oh. We have low impact development for stormwater from design. Yeah. yeah. Well, that could disappear okay, next week. That. Yeah, that's why we kept that capitalized. Yeah. And, and we have a case. we and we do describe what the measures are and everything. Yeah. So. Can we go now to 10 2, 3, 6? The density bonuses. I think that that's really the main thing that's left, right? That wasn't determined last time. And the explanation. Okay. The, I, one, one question, do we, do we intend it to be a mixture of the following or one of the following? I mean, just considering, and, and the reason I ask that is because we've got. It's one or more of the following. It says well, based upon a mixture difference. of the following. Mm -hmm. A mixture would be more than one, and one or more would be one. 
Well, in the past, we have offered density bonuses if someone just does affordability, right? Mm -hmm. And I well, assume we're not going to take that away. Yeah, I view, well, yeah, I guess I wouldn't use mixture. I view it as their individual carrots. Right. That we so one or more of the following. Of them. Yeah. Okay. That, that means, just so we're clear, somebody could come and say, oh, we've got all electric appliances. So we get a bonus density, which is a really cheap way. To well, I would density. recommend striking D myself. I think that the town is going to come up with an approach. I, I would actually like to replace D with, you know, a percentage beyond the stretch code requirement for efficiency as opposed to. I would just, I, w I would keep something that does not yet exist because then it is there for this but are we, we going to give it. extra units for it yeah, when it actually is probably even cheaper to do it right. than to use conventional systems you know okay, we just had it we just had one win -win here that didn't want to. well that, that's that's but there are okay, there so are people so that think on, the other way you know so based on your discussion just five minutes ago um, I think you can easily delete D. I think we can. Um, because you have in here, you've retained the um, long range plan. We've already insisted upon it. So, right, right. Um, Even right. without this. I, I think well, deleting D. It's safe. We're not going to provide de bonus density for this. We're going to insist upon it. Yeah. Okay. So, where is that being so, insisted so, upon specifically in here? Elsewhere. It's not specifically in here, but yeah. well, we've based done on it. your previous conversation, yes, it specifically you can tie it to a very we found statement a way to do it. Plans. Right, but I mean, it is a little different now that if we're going to be the special permit granting and authority, you are the special permit granting authority under this, so you will have to make your required findings under eleven six as well. Yeah. Are we okay? I, I think that it just does it. I don't want to give bonuses for D. I mean, one thing I thought about is I, I agree with striking it. Um, since we would like to just make it a blanket requirement, then does it make sense to do um, as all electric considered net zero? Or is that like, no, above I wouldn't think so. No, but what we would do is we would offer incentives right, for, for net zero, zero or something right. close to it, you right. know? And that's what I was saying. Maybe we, we can't, I think it's always tricky to uh, give an exact HERS rating. I think we talked mm -hmm. about the down, the pitfalls of that. But yeah. what if we said, you know, a percentage beyond or something that's like great. that, right? Um, or we would just say that, you know, for efficiency beyond the stretch code or, you know, or net zero. Net zero. Or efficiency beyond. Okay. Net zero means specifically that it, generates as much electricity right. as it right uses. which you and, and we we have a we have i don't think that should be our focus no i don't think it has crazy. to be the case i mean it's wonderful if it is but right. yeah so uh that's why i would say that either net zero capable or you could, you could also use passive house standards you could say built to passive house standards because there there are such things and that is very low usage um this is starting to feel pretty wide open. One other thing, consideration so for the warrant I'm, is. I'm, I'm also um, very hesitant to, you are now trying to fix so many different things that address so many different elements that are somewhat beyond a PRD. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the purpose of the PRD. This is, we're just talking about bonus here. I mean, we're not. What are we giving optional. bonuses for? I, but but it's like choose the your PR, own the PRD for how you get isn't to develop sustainable homes or net zero homes. The PRD is for the preservation of open space and diversity of housing. Yeah, and me and I, I'm I'm with you, Matt. That I think we we delete that section. The things that we would want to award a bonus density for those other things go to diversity of housing. Um, and, and the zero step entry and the twenty five hundred square feet. Yeah. So, what, what and, so if we just cut D. Oh, sorry. The diversity of housing. Uh, so we have the definition diversity of housing as. Um, um, you're going to have to speak up. The I'm definition sorry. of diversity of housing. Uh, what is it? We have three three criteria, correct? Uh, it's a uh, number of bedrooms, uh, price, 
and yeah, so, uh, uh, two or three styles. This is something, I mean, uh, this is, I mean, it's not about form-based code or anything. If we can, at this point, uh, maybe uh, we would like to include more than one architect or something like that, where it becomes more actually diverse, not just like, because uh, um, the, I mean, the houses that we see, they're not really diverse, I mean, uh, architecturally speaking. So that's why if there's some, some way to, to do that, that's... I think it would be I would rule easy. that out of scope in that we just, you know, this is final edits. You know, we're, I don't yeah, think we're no. trying to, I mean, no, maybe in a future year, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we have, by the way, back to the... But More to, just to address Alan's yeah. point, I, I, I believe that's beyond the scope of the town's ability to tell an applicant you have to go out and hire more than one architect. Right. Um, I, I, I think I, I, that, that's not, um, you have to understand everything that you're doing here has to be under, um, right. you know, as far as the Zoning Act mm -hmm. and the purpose of the Zoning Act, and I think to require well, somebody. Maybe, maybe that's not the right way of uh, thinking about it, but uh, just, I mean, I don't think we get uh, diverse housing. I mean, that's, that's uh, I don't know. How, but I now don't that have we a get a design basically. review, like. Yeah, it's, people have been talking about as a whole separate initiative, design review. I see, okay. And, but that's a future. Well, I mean, you could fit it under the thing. But I don't think we're going to try to squeeze. What I'd rather not do is try to shoehorn some stuff in here at the last minute into this thing. Um, I'm just curious about C, especially given what you actually found in the long range plan about new new family houses and workforce housing. Like, I guess if I'm a developer and I read C, I'm like, okay, great. That's pretty easy to do. It's pretty easy to meet that. Um, and it's, and those can, those might not be affordable by any stretch of the imagination. Like they, those could fit into that upper category of price range that you know we're seeing being proposed. Um, that's just my reaction to see. See, I think it speaks to this issue of diversity in terms of uh, accommodating people with accessibility issues that we don't currently have. But the fact that sixty five older population of population in twenty thirty. Right. And accessibility older. isn't strictly age necessarily. It can right. be other things too. Maybe I'm naive, but like if I if I'm an aging person in this town, there's no way I'm selling my house because I can't afford to buy a new one. <laughs> well you can't afford to stay in your house because of the yeah. property. So, yeah, and yeah. unaccessible. So, so you paid off your mortgage at but, that point. Okay, back to this. I mean we I think we could are we okay with striking D now? Yes. In terms of whether we want to have anything else in here, so I guess Haley was questioning C. Are, are people okay with C other than her? Yes. Okay I am. C. I'm okay with C. But all right. And then we have updated the purpose now to reflect that we are, you know, this is incorporating green building practices. So do we want to provide? an incentive related to that. And if we do, is it something crisp that we can stick in here and be confident about going I, on to the warrant I, tonight? I personally see net zero used all the time and I don't think that is like, you know, a different language by any means and it's pretty straightforward in my mind, um, but. But as green building design, is that the, but the first fulfillment part of, of green building design. May I suggest that just as we've done with recent projects, we expect um, to take in energy efficiency no matter whether they're getting a bonus density or not. I, I, I go back to your point that we don't need to have an incentive. Rather, that's a that is a requirement. It's a new would, baseline. That's a that's a baseline. Yeah. That would be my view. Yeah, but net zero is not the baseline, it's just right. building practices. Right, so do we want to give a bonus for net zero construction? So you're going to get trees chopped down if you go for net zero. The, yes. on, you, the only way you can produce your right. energy other on places site you can until we green have power Mr. Fusion on our, on our countertops is <laughs> yeah. going to be... Uh, okay. So or do we then just leave it with A, B, and C? And take it to the warrant like that? That would be my recommendation. Yes. And so just to... Be clear the like amount of bonus is 
It's left no, open. Discretionary. Okay. It's left open. Except for yeah, yeah. It's in all cases it is. Yeah. Um, all right. Mr. Chair, may I explain my letter from last time and also make a suggestion? I thought. Uh, well, I think we were planning to have the the public comment period at the end of the meeting. I realize. Yes, that's totally fine with me. I just right. I, thought I, I might Let's want to explain what I meant in the letter before, uh, um, in case you wanted to consider it. But I mean, we we did get the letter. Uh, yeah. Save it for the end of the meeting. Okay. All right. Okay. Um. Any other? Recommendations on this? Are we okay with everything else? Should we vote on these? Yeah, let's in vote the... as while we got it in front of us. Should we mm. revisit the letter? Though I guess I feel bad. You can. If you can vote. If you want to. On them. Some, but you're not done with this one. You still need to do the explanation. Oh, the explanation. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. Um, Marsha threw this together, and um, as I noted to the board, I, I think that this is um, a very, you know, this is going to be one of the bigger presentations, and if you tried to explain everything that's going on in this explanation, the town report would become, you know, even longer. Well, that was my reaction to Kate's, was it was pretty long. Okay. So, cut it back or you are we here? We're yes. in this language. Yep. Okay. From ZBA to the planning board, I think. Um, so, if there were other points, um, I know um, Kate had um, sent me an email. I don't know if you wanted to read through this and then decide what the board wants to add, or you want me to read it? Um, what do you think about it? Yes. Is that, can I ask Elizabeth what she thinks about it? Sure. Do you think it's, because um, I, when I wrote it, I so when I saw your email, I was like, I was supposed to write the, that and I never did. Then I wrote it, then I saw that you had started, Marsha had started mm -hmm. one. So do you think that we should just start with Marsha's at this point? Or do you um, think? I, I think if you're gonna have a conversation, I need to actually read it. Oh, sorry, you haven't? No, I mean, I. but you're having a conversation with just me and the rest of the board has no idea what you're talking about. So okay. um, do you want me to read it? I'm happy to read it. Okay. You, do you like reading stuff? Or you, no, can, or you can put it on the screen if you have yeah, it. Yeah, like in your uh, email. Well, no, it's in my email. Okay. Never mind. It would be very difficult for me to connect to. Okay. Okay. I can read it. Um, hold on, sorry. We'll okay, I'll read it. Okay. The, the provision of the existing zoning bio allows for planned residential development as an alternative pattern of residential land development by special permit. From that which is allowed as of right under the zoning bylaw or subdivision provisions. On qualifying properties of minimum size, the PRD allows for a residential development of greater density offset by a commensurate preservation of open space on the site. The planning board recommends certain changes to the bylaw to provide more incentive for applicants to propose more aggressive, energy efficient, and sustainable design while striking a balance to make sure developers still have incentives to choose this option over an as of right subdivision. Make the permitting process more efficient by moving the special permit granting authority to the planning board uh, with the existing scope. Where it should be where the existing scope. Oh, where the existing scope of review is located and to provide clarification for how wetlands are defined for the purpose of calculating the minimum open space requirement for PRDs. Elizabeth, can you just have more energy in your voice, like? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. The cut. I'm hearing her. Sorry. It's okay. Wait, um, I'll do it. More, do more it. specifically, yeah, okay. the proposed changes include, one, provide <laughs> continuity of review and approval by making the planning board the special permit granting authority for PRDs. Currently, the planning board conducts a comprehensive review process with the applicant before it makes a recommendation to the Zoning Board of Appeals, who issues the permit. The proposed changes would make the planning board the special permit granting authority. Two, makes PRD subject to site plan review criteria listed under section 11.8.5 of the bylaw. These criteria are very helpful in site plan review and are as useful and applicable to PRDs. They will allow for a more developed, 
um, or formal consideration of such factors as impacts on adjacent properties, impacts on traffic and the town infrastructure, and natural resource preservation and enhancement. If, if I may just interject. Sure. I think the good news is you've written the presentation on this. <laughs> But I think what we need is a really succinct thing for the, the actual warrant, um, which would, you, just pulling out some of the, I mean, I think we need to say we're switching authority from, from ZBA to planning. Um, well, in fact, that we're, we're, you just mentioned one there about uh, using the site plan review principles, um, that we are incorporating this, this one element, this community criteria from the long range plan. So do you want to start, do you want to pare down the bulk that my one, two, three, four, or do you not even want to start with my stuff? No, no, I think we can start with your stuff. So maybe just pare down one, two, three, four. I, and I had a pretty concrete suggestion. I would okay. cut se sentence two out of your paragraph. Oh, um, so oh. this didn't go to the whole board. That's why I'm reading it. Um, okay. And uh, I so this, I hate that way this works. <laughs> three. Introducing a new sustainability criterion in the site design criteria listed in the PRD provisions of the bylaw to encourage such measures as energy efficiency, low impact design, um, and you actually don't have greenhouse gas emissions. Um, okay. Four, provide clarification on how wetlands are defined for the purpose of calculating the minimum open space requirement. This does not change the intent of the calculation, but provides a technical clarification to explicitly include wetlands which are jurisdictional as isolated vegetated wetlands under the U.S. Clean Water Act. And I don't have the density bonus, so that would be five, I guess. Um, Sorry. So what I'd like to suggest is that I can um, take um, put the, the revisions that the board has made to the bylaw tonight um, and just make a bulleted list of those uh, revisions a more succinct bulleted list of the revisions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as Kate said, um, the planning board is a special permit granting authority um, requiring site plan approval, um, the incorporation of the density bonuses um, dealing with the square footage and um, the zero step entry, um, the incorporation of new sustainable design requirements. Um, and incorporation of low impact design. Um, energy calculation. Um, and, and the tree. And and the tree, the, um, tree preservation yep. by law. Yeah. I think that's, that approach makes sense. Are you, um, are you going to keep either of these bullets in yellow? Um, They'll be subsumed yeah. by what she's yeah, got. This, I just want to make sure there's just a couple of typos, but I'm not going to bother with it. Um, no, I would I would make it a more succinct bulleted list. Good. Um, Good. But do you want to at least incorporate that That's first paragraph? I thought the first paragraph was, was good. Or Kate's first paragraph? Yeah. I would say, well, I was going to suggest cutting the second sentence from it because it's getting into... Oh, on qualifying properties. Yeah, minimum, minimum size. size PRC, you know, I, I think that it's okay. basically more than, needed more, than yeah. more info that we need. Okay. Um, just before we move on from PRDs, is, maybe this was talked about last time, but I'm not sure if the letter that she's referring to um, that we received is a related to the tree bylaw or not. Um, did we talk about this last time? We did. Okay. Yeah. So we addressed any comment related to her letter. Well, not all of them. Okay. I mean, what we did was we took, uh, I think, the, the part that was um, kind of the scope that we had previously discussed, which was really um, enshrining the applicability of the tree preservation bylaw to PRDs and also in, in interpreting it for the sake of the PRD because, um, you know, once we're the permit granting authority, the timing is a little different. Mm -hmm making sure that those were clear. But then in terms of additional green initiatives beyond that, I think that the board should prioritize those and do them, but that that's sort of beyond the scope of what we had previously discussed. So that that's that was at least my summary of the conversation last time. Okay. Yeah. 
yeah, I recommend a specimen tree bylaw, for example. I, but I think it would be general, not just PRDs. Anyway, we are we now in a position to um, vote on the? That would be great. I would um, like to at least have um, one planning board member review sure. The, <laughs> sure. the final draft. The final. Yeah. So we need a form that of uh, that we need a form of motion very similar to the last one. I mean, we motion to approve to to submit yep. this uh, Warren article, Warren article as, as amended and authorize one member to um, review the final right. submission. Okay. And that member would be uh, Kate. I accept. Okay. <laughs> uh, any second to that motion? So who moved it? I moved it. Okay. Second. Haley seconded. All in favor? Okay. All right. Let's go to the next one. Um, should we just go down through the list here as it's uh, listed on the website? Prohibited uses. I don't think that we have any. Oh, uh, yeah. There's no further changes on prohibited uh, uses, so no, we just from need the to. Last meeting, you decided not to try and incorporate right. operable. So there were no. Um, right. I don't believe there were any changes to this one. Okay. So, motion? I what move that language? we submit oh, yeah. <laughs> this article uh, as, to as amend drafted. zoning bylaw four, 471 prohibited uses as drafted. Matt, that sounds just like a motion. Yes, it is. Okay. All those in favor? All right. Uh, next one Hammerhead Lot. Do I hear a motion? I move to. Uh, oh, um, do you have something changed? Yeah, no. The only thing I um, would change is um, it should zoning bylaw six three two and six three two two hammer head lot. That should be after. Right what? after six three two two, it should say hammer head lot. I see. Okay. Um, I move to add this article to the warrant as amended. Second that. All in favor. Okay. Next one. Accessory dwellings. Uh, I think last time we struck um, some stuff from this, but. Yeah, and I did have um, one um, Item of discussion, once I find it, sorry. Um, so in here you have the maximum size. The additional dwelling unit shall occupy no more than 750 gross square feet. Yeah. But elsewhere in the bylaw when it references um, like under the max FAR, um, that excludes basements, open and screen porches, yeah. and decks. Um, so want to add that should, terminology? I'm, I'm, it's a question. Does the board want to add that? Well, if the, if the definition- square feet, gross if the, square feet would be- Right, no, we don't care about decks and porches, I think. But you're saying the term gross square feet does include or does not it, include? The term gross square, um, gross area for, yeah, what is it, gross floor, Oh, gross square feet. What is it? That was gross floor area. Gross square feet. So it should be. We use gross. It should match whatever the current definition is. So that might change too. In the current. I didn't bring my bylaw tonight. So not a fifty square foot accessory dwelling with a thousand square foot. It's yeah. gross yeah. floor. Okay. So it's gross floor area should be gross floor area. There you go. Um, which the sum of the horizontal areas of the floor of a building measured from the exterior face of exterior wall or from the center line of a wall 
separating two buildings, not including any space where the floor to ceiling height is less than six feet, eight inches. So that includes... That includes a basement. It includes a basement if the ceiling height's over six, eight. Okay. Um, so that I was my question, floor, whether right. the board wants to... I think we want to change it to, yeah, to that. So occupy group seven, no, no more than 750 square square feet of gross floor area? Of gross floor, floor area, area, excluding, you want to exclude basements, open and screen porches? Sure. Well, wouldn't that be comma, which excludes those things? Because isn't, isn't the definition means that it's excluded? No, the oh. definition is oh. included. Oh, then why, then it seems like it should be a different term. But okay, so go ahead. It, it's, so. I mean, because what it, do we say mirrors, in the FAR bylaws? It's the FAR exact FAR same language. Okay. That mirrors the FAR. F -A -R. Okay, we just so want to use the you, exact term. Yeah. But just seems like there should be another, like, there living, should be a term for that. Or something. Shouldn't there? No, no, you cannot use living area. You're right. But I mean, like, another term, if gross square, uh, gross floor area includes those things, there should be another term of area that excludes them. But that's right, okay. but that's but okay. We don't, as long we don't as we make it parallel, we're fine. But we're saying we're okay with 750 square feet plus a basement and a porch. If it's less than the height is less than so <laughs> I was just bringing up the point trying to be consistent mm -hmm. under 6 to 13 maximum floor area ratio it is total gross floor area excluded from the gross floor area in the residence districts are basement opened or screen porches decks and accessory structures with no permanent foundation are less than 100 square feet in area. And that seems to be the definition of gross floor area in the residential districts. Um, so it, the definition of gross floor area is what I read previously. It's exterior wall, right, exterior but, wall, excluding area, you know, and anything has a ceiling height over six, eight. That's the definition of gross floor area. You can leave it as gross floor area or you, if you want it to be consistent with the max FAR, you can exclude from that 750 square feet basements, opened and screened porches. I would think on an accessory dwelling, the basement wouldn't even be exclusively part of the accessory dwelling in most cases. It can I mean, be its own. Um, is this by right or special permit? Sorry. I'm sorry, this what? This is by right. This is by right? This is by right. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, so that's the only thing I wonder about, like. So do we, we could be conservative and just say 750 gross square feet, period. Well, it would be um, no more than 750 square feet of gross floor area. Of gross floor area. And that would be the conservative approach. But I can tell you that, I mean, on most residences, you, you could interpret the basement as being common or not you know, exclusive to the accessory dwelling. And same thing with a porch, you know, it could be. So I, I don't think it's gonna make a big difference either way. Perfect, that was okay. my question. All right, so any other comments on this? So can I get a motion? I make a motion to submit as amended, or we're not amending this, right? Yeah, no, there uh, is an amendment, amended. yeah. yeah as amended um, for uh, the warrant. Okay. Uh, any second to this? Um, right, Alan, what, sec seconds? Sorry, one Discussion, we can have discussion, yes. Um, the last sentence before the explanation or take any other action relative thereto. That is just a standard. Okay, standard so that's, that's there. That's a bylaw yep, okay. warrant article. Sorry, I didn't notice the one. Um, but I, I will also, um, one question that the board asked last time in here, there was the minimum of 350 square feet. Yeah, and that's um, been struck. And after talking with um, Marsha and then the building commissioner and the public health director, um, the only requirement under the building code is that um, it's seven, yeah, <laughs> 70 square feet. Um, the building code requires 70 square feet for habitable space for cooking, sleeping, living, and excludes hallways, bathrooms, and closets. Um, so now that's a tiny house. We were all very comfortable <laughs> with striking the 350 square feet and not okay. trying 
to incorporate the 70 square feet because nobody's going to build an accessory. I think even Thoreau's cabin was bigger than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a legal non conforming. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair, bizarre. Did you want to vote? Oh, we, we oh vote. sorry. We, 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 well, no, we had discussion but, now. Yeah. We're ready yeah. to vote. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Okay. Fairs, bazaars, <laughs> antique shows, suppers, and dances. Suppers. <laughs> Philanthropic organizations have been added. There were no can other I, changes. Can I get a motion? Make a motion that we submit this for inclusion in the warrant. As written. As written. Second. Okay, all in favor? Thank you. Next one. Relief from parking. Um, there was... I don't, I don't think there were any changes to this one either. I don't recall any. Okay. I don't recall, but... Uh, motion. Uh, I move that we do this in relief from parking seven seven two twelve in the word article as written. Second. All right, Haley or Haley. Haley Haley okay. Um, all in favor? Okay. We're getting through it. Uh, Throw Depot map warrant article. I move that we submit this warrant article on adjusting the warrant zoning map uh, for, uh, to the for the town meeting warrant as written. Second. All those in favor. Okay. Next one. Two families. Um, the only change to this one um, was. Um, the common wall uh no no um at the end you had originally had a, a minimum of 350 square feet so i just i deleted that as well to be similar to the accessory dwelling okay the dwelling units or any additions to create an additional dwelling unit in an existing single family dwelling shall share a common floor wall. So does that mean that the dwelling units themselves must share a common floor or town that's or, or wall? Yeah, that's what I'm reading too. The dwelling units or additions yeah. to create the additional dwelling unit. Yeah. So yes, I'm reading that, that they have to share a common wall. So yeah. That, that's correct, right? Well, you're touching on is Do we the, consider that distinct from garages? Right. A, a garage. It's living space. Is it a dwelling unit? <laughs> yeah, I would think. I, I would think that the dwelling unit includes the garage. Yeah. I, elsewhere, when we talk about dwelling, we're talking about the whole enchilada. In, okay. In, in, in I just think of dwelling unit. I don't no, know. dwelling okay. unit would be the whole thing. The whole enchilada. Okay, so it would still allow garage to garage. So. Um, Here's where, if you if you think about um, other projects that you've recently reviewed, um, you had a a dwelling unit, and this garage faced this way, and it was a duplex, and you had this dwelling unit, and it was garage to garage was the connection, but this garage faced yeah. that way. So. Um, my my reason where I don't think you need to further try to refine this issue in this bylaw is that this is by special permit. Okay, so I'll, I'll accept somebody that. Somebody submits a special permit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the four garages to make, together, you have to we're make all say, the other findings. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Under the special permit criteria, I, and I and, yield. Okay. So. I, so oh, I think the bulleted list would read better if you didn't use semicolons at the end of each one, but. That that's is, fine. That is a, a very picky thing. No, nope, that works. I agree. Okay, so then you can move. I move that we uh, add this warrant article. I uh, add this article to the warrant as amended. Second. All those in favor? Okay. You're done. And we have gone through that list. All right. Uh, so. 
I don't know. I think we could probably skip liaison reports and staff updates, perhaps. Is there anything exciting from the staff? Anything more exciting than usual, I should say. There always is. There's a big turnout at Green New Deal. Oh, yeah, she did. What was that? I went to the Green New Deal um, town hall the other night, and I was, like, standing room only in the overflow room. There was, like, over 500 people there at the marquee event. Um, and then I missed the very beginning, but Acton did mention that um, they are working on a net zero elementary school. Um, which I'm just hearing more and more about in, you know, Lincoln, Lexington, Acton, like, so just something to think about as we attend our middle school um, design planning. Okay. This CPC is, is done for the year. Right. Congratulations. Okay. <laughs> We're done until February. Right. We're done until February? <laughs> okay. So then it's time to open for public comment. Yeah, thank you. Um, and you gave us 60 minutes to do it. Um, I didn't see in this version that I copied from the website this morning how the, the, uh, the um, enshrinement of the bylaw that you decided to include, the kind of the documentation part, it's not here. I think it's not, I mean, maybe, maybe if you had a different version, but I just took this down from uh, the web today. The sec the 1720 version? It's, uh, it's, it says January Probably. 7, and it's, I'm talking about 10.4.1.2, which is so it has section H under 10412 that that's says right. existing tree inventory is required under the tree preservation right. bylaw. But it does not add the, the portion that you said you had decided to add about um, documentation of how it will be met. No? I, 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 I may have misunderstood what you said on that, or you may have misunderstood what Well, you I do recall there being two things. What? My letter had three things. Like right, but there were two that we said we were looking at. And Elizabeth, I thought that you had, is it maybe elsewhere in here? Because we had reviewed your letter. Yes. And then we had looked at two things. I'm sorry, the late hour, I'm trying to recall the details. And I'm wondering if maybe it was just a rules and regulations aspect that maybe it doesn't need to be in the bylaw itself. We did not adopt the signage. trying to find the relevant letter. When was it discussed? At our last oh, meeting. On the 26th? My, my yeah. impression was from watching the video was that we did not adopt my uh, suggestion to include other trees as mentioned. Right, the and full I tree inventory. Uh, yes, right. and I, I would like to explain some of that in a bit. But um, and that you did you did uh, think it was a good idea to put something about documenting how the applicant might meet the tree bylaw for the trees that it applies to. Uh, am I wrong? I mean, but that's the tree inventory, I believe. But that's but cited. The inventory is just the inventory, and they don't. That doesn't necessarily <laughs> include a plan of we will keep these trees, we will cut those, but we will replace them or we'll paint this, whatever it takes. But so there's going to be a narrative. There's going to be a little bit of a narrative. No, but I think that 
the I, 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 just, I, I just thought you agreed to it. I'm not just, I mean, if we you did, did it, that's fine. I'm just yeah. like wanting to clarify what you did or didn't agree to. The idea is that we get the information on the existing trees within the, within the, within the buildable area, but for, we're talking about within the PRD. PRD, there will always a be a landscape plan. No, that's that's the second. That's that's it. That's the other item. Yeah, I I I the, the, the what I what I was requesting for the tree preservation bylaw item H is different than what I was also suggesting for other trees. So I was just at this point I was just noting that the way it is written in item H, it does not say anything about. No. How they, their explanation of which you I thought you agreed to, but I think, I think we did agree. That's fine. I agree. So if the if the board would like to go back and um, revisit the PRD bylaw as far as making an additional revision, is that something the board would like to do since you already voted on it? Yeah. And I okay. Picture, I so so. Um, I think it'd be uh, very easy just to change item H yeah. to um, as part of the development. Let me finish, please. Um, development plans consisting of of um, and it's under the the tree bylaw would be um, a. I lost where the wording is. The exact wording is a tree protection and mitigation plan as required under the tree preservation bylaw. Um, I, I thought that's what we had said last time, something like that. I, it, it, it might have been that something like that. that but um, yeah. So what that would mean is that as part of their development plan package, um, they would basically be submitting a yeah. tree preservation and Basically, they'd be plan. conforming to the the intent of the bylaw, you know, that well, they would include it in their PRD application. Correct. Yeah. The requirements of the tree protection bylaw would be um, as far as the plan and showing the trees to be safe, trees to yeah. remove, the fencing the and protection. all of that would be yeah. um, included as part of the PRD. Okay, but let's let Tanya finish her public comment before Thank we you. take this back up. I appreciate that. Thank you. I will explain why um, I was talking about the other two requests, just so you know why that was. And there is also one other question uh, I have here that I just noticed. Uh, under 10.4.3, it says Nat uh, Natural Resources Commission's report and recommendations, and it says including at least column, and then it doesn't say what those are. Ten four. Ten point four point three. Yeah, that looks like a formatting mistake. I mean, there was no intent to change that portion of the bylaw, but Nobody. it clearly there's some text missing. I mean, can I, can I look so, at your? Mm -hmm. That's because you're not changing any of the text under 10.431, So there's just for the. But I thought that you're weren't we replacing it in the entirety? Three. You are you are not replacing the bylaw in its entirety. No. But you, you are only replacing sections that are amended. Changes are shown in bold. I guess the warrant article is drafted so that the following sections read as follows. You I are, see. You are not, okay, you are so not deleting in its entirety. Okay, good. Then that's. So that's why it. It wouldn't appear. The warrant article only. Um, it's for the sake of brevity. The sections that are changing and not sections that aren't changing. Mm -hmm. um, because the, the minute you delete a bylaw in its entirety, 
and adopt a new bylaw, the attorney general will go through and evaluate the entire bylaw. The entire bylaw, whether you meant to change something or not. Okay. So you, you could have had a very old bylaw and something works for you, but now, you know. Okay. Vis a vis that point, may I may I suggest that in the in the final written version for town meeting, you do include whatever those are in case somebody wants to suggest an amendment so that the entire so that the public can see what the whole deal is. Yeah, so typically what the board does as far as your handouts for town meeting, you would have the like, existing bylaw mm -hmm. and then a, a full version of the of the amended bylaw so that people can see so we'd have a handout yeah okay that makes sense yeah so that's typically because the happens warrant when there's significant changes you I mean because it actually ends up being publishing costs I mean it's printing it's costs all, for the yeah. town in the end okay so, uh, I mean, so, okay so, so my other two so the, the points that you did not want to include I just wanted to explain uh, I heard during your discussion for the signage that you mentioned that if the planning board becomes the permitting authority, there will be better uh, notification of the butters because of, if every hearing will be a public hearing. Um, and that's fine. Uh, I have two things for that. One is that may not happen. I mean, the planning board may not be, I mean, there might be an amendment for, that people say, no, it's still the zoning board of appeals. But the reason I was um, requesting a signage um, item is was so that the entire neighborhood, not just the butters, could be aware that there is a PRD being proposed there, there is, which will affect the entire neighborhood in the long run. Uh, so, uh, so that all the neighbors, all the interested public, even from other parts of town, would know about it. And, and in, in, in a timely manner before things proceed. So, so that was my suggest, the signage suggestion, um, because it's not just something that concerns the butters alone. And the, as for the other one, for um, a mention of all large trees, and I left the diameter open. Um, it's because specimen trees are not the, which you mentioned, are not the only case where you might think, or the public might think, it might need to be preserved. It is more in order to give some validity to the planning board or to the permitting authority uh, that uh, the existing trees are, are a vital and valuable part of the landscape that is being considered and that along with the landscape plan, it's good to know what is being removed, what is staying or what may be important to preserve as a wildlife corridor, for example, not just as a specimen tree. So, um, I mean, when I was on the tree preservation subcommittee, there was some discussion about uh, leaving out subdivisions, for example, because with subdivisions, it was said the planning board would have some say on what trees to preserve. It was also said by the uh, I think both by the town planner and by the planning board liaison at the time that that also needed improvement to the subdivision rules. But um, so so my, my idea was just to include there just a validation that all these other trees exist too, and therefore they are like worth keeping in mind without requiring anything, without like expanding the bylaw or anything at this stage. So that's why I was mentioning that. Okay. And so. I, Thank you for hearing right. that. Thank you. Oh, and one more thing, something else about the, uh, when you were discussing 1440 about the electric versus, specified electric versus not. Um, uh, what I was thinking that you were speaking was that in the future, if there are other uh, technologies, one may want to leave the uh, option open for those, and that may be a reason not to specify, just Okay. I just want to mention that All right, thank you. Thank Any you. other public comment? Yes. Uh, uh, sure, Kelsey, nice to um, to go, I don't know if it's subject to comment or question, but on the Main Street PRD that you did, when we're talking about the sales price in this, the 
ranges. Yeah. And you went back and looked at the four and five being affordable. Rather no. Than, Not a million five being affordable, just the so average, yeah, the average so recent, average. recent new so, construction so price. That was yeah. a little bit of a threshold you were using to judge whether these would be affordable or diverse. I'm curious, why not use dollars per square foot as the standard? Mm -hmm. That way you can actually kind of judge without taking the impact of size into account, right? Because that way you're standardizing the size. Because these could be smaller homes, right? which is maybe why. Well, that's why we have separate square footage criteria as well as dollar criteria. But when you're looking at the diversity and you're talking about, geez, I think somebody made the point, it depends on the mixture. When you're looking at a range, you can have one house at the low end and a bunch at 90%. Yeah. At the high end. But if you did it on a per square foot basis, wouldn't that help normalize your comparison? I'm just curious why you didn't take that into account. Well, it's not that we're some, per se looking for houses that are oh. less. Yeah, maybe we, maybe we should okay. have a discussion outside. Yeah, 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 I'm not talking about 1440. Yeah. We're not, but it's, I don't think we're looking for houses that are less expensive on a per square foot basis. In fact, what we're lo looking for is mechanisms that make it uh, and make it economically viable for developers to build houses that are less expensive, and, and realtors pretty much have price houses based upon square footage. So what we're looking for is actually driving small smaller houses in development. Okay. okay. And then on the standards part, where you go through the list of standards, and there was a discussion about the impact on the town finances. Mm -hmm. is, is it a requirement that developers include some assessment in their application of that impact? No, we have to, we provide that. Sorry? We provide that. So that listing of the standards is something you provide for the developers? It's our rec part of our recommendation letter. Oh, so they don't have to include it in their application? No. Oh, thank you. All right, any other public comment? Are you going to re redo the, the part that you agreed to? We, to we need to re we to revote. Um, unless there's any further public comment, that's what we would move to. Okay. So that would be to um, further amend the PRD bylaw to um, change item 10412H to say tree protection and mitigation plan as required under the tree preservation bylaw. Um, I think that was it. Right. Okay. So moved. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Let's make a motion to what to reconsider. <laughs> the, 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 motion to reconsider to amend and then resubmit the warrant article for the plan residential development bylaw amendment to add the phrase. Well, to change the wording of item ten. Ten, ten four as you have. Ten four one two. As you've stated. H. Okay. No. I second that motion. All right. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, All right. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>